Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Lay your hands on your head and pray in tongues and say, Father, do something in my mind and my life. Please pray. Now is not the time to stay around carelessly. Be focused and pray. Lay your hands on your head and pray. Do something upon this mind. I allow you to flow through me. Let my mind not be a limitation to my destiny. There is a voice that you have given me that my generation must hear. And everything that constitutes a limitation must leave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last week, we listened again to the message, Hallelujah, that I had preached about allowing the kingdom of God to find expression and in that teaching I began to say how that the limitation of the impact of men is not the power or the ability of God but our mind from the realm where we allow our wills our emotion and our intellect to come under submission to the government of Christ and that if we can satisfactorily do that there is no limit to which God will be able to use us. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Let's begin tonight. I want to establish a few things and then we'll pray. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new and I will Follow you forward. That's what he's doing in someone's life tonight. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. God has no favorites in the kingdom. Listen to me. God has no favorites in the kingdom. God loves everyone in the kingdom equally, but he does not trust everyone equally. God has no favorites in the kingdom. But the operation of God, when you read the Bible, it makes it look as though God had a soft spot for certain people and he seemed to reject others. Until you understand the character of the operation of the kingdom, you may think God has favorites. God has no favorite preachers. God has no favorite businessmen. God has no favorite students. God has no favorite history makers. Every man is saddled with the responsibility of charting the course of his destiny. And the degree to which we come into alignment with God's precepts is the degree to which it looks like God is tilting towards our direction. 
It's very important that I say this. Because we live in a society that the difference is clear in everything. Among preachers, the difference is clear. There are men of God struggling and struggling and struggling to make impact. There are men of God struggling to do what they call ministry. In the world of finance, there are those making impact and there are those living as if God hates them. In the world of family life, there are others raising award-winning children. There are others raising arm robbers and cowards and thieves and, and nuisance to society. In the world of impact, there are those that the hand of God is mighty upon. They are shaking lands and territories. And yet there are others scrounging and scrambling for relevance. What is responsible for this difference? Could it be that God decided to choose others? Could it be that God just hated others? Is that really it? What would be responsible, brothers and sisters, for a man who rises up as a nobody? The map of your village not being on the map. And yet you rise to be a global phenomenon. Where people say, thank God you were born. Thank God you did not die. Blessed is the womb that produced this child. What makes that difference? That a man will be born a pauper with rain falling. And yet at the end of his life, he is a generational blessing. His name becomes an access key to favor. That every time you say, I am associated with Sam. They say, which Sam? Because of that, access is given. What is responsible for this difference in society? It's not enough just to love God and know God and pray in tongues. A true apostolic ministry prepares people to be agents of societal transformation. It's not enough just to pray in tongues. The Bible never said you are the light of the church. It said you are the light of cosmos, the world. There is a level of impact and illumination that comes from the church. The key, the key to world evangelization is not necessarily evangelism as we know. It is evangelism but not one-on-one -on -one preaching and sharing tracts. We will never win souls that way till Jesus comes. The key to transgenerational impact and bringing territories to the submission of the Christ is hidden in one word influence 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 the mystery word that holds the key to compelling generations to come to the lordship of christ everybody say influence influence will do more than tracts will do influence will do more than crusades will do influence at every given point in your life your decisions your values are being altered by someone you look up to as a role model consciously or unconsciously and therefore the key to bringing earth our territories cosmos to the obedience of christ is ascending intentionally to a position of kingdom influence that grants us access to the minds of people and that they can by our influence buy into our ideology which seeks to enthrone Christ as king. This is the gospel. The gospel is not just a message that saves sinners. The gospel is an ideology like a terrorist ideology. The gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purpose. First, that spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. Then, the influence of his jurisdiction across the strata of society. If we are not doing this, there is no reason why we should be alive. No matter what kind of conference, convention, impartation, if it does not lead to what I just told you, then it's a waste. The summary of all that I just said is called kingdom advancement. The intentional strategic frontiering of the influence of the Christ in the earth. This is consistent with the eternal plan of God. What is the eternal plan of God? 
according to Colossians, that all things be headed up in the Christ. And I told you that that plan of God, all mankind and creation will come to the submission of the Christ by a principle called the reflection principle. The reflection principle. An entity confers power on another as a proof of his might and royalty. The mystery of the sun and the moon. The moon does not have a glory of its own. It reflects the glory of the sun. If you want to see the excellency of the brightness of the sun, you look at the moon. The degree to which the moon aligns with the sun is the degree to which it, it shines. Hallelujah. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you busy until Jesus comes. Christianity is not just a religion to keep you until you get a job or until you graduate or until you get married. Christianity is an ideology. The faith life is an ideology. It's a movement. It's a cause. There is something we are doing. God has an intention in his mind and he expects every inhabitant in the earth to be given an opportunity to understand that. His emphasis right now is building his spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. And that's what we call being born again. The establishment of the reign and the rule of the Christ in the hearts of men. Not just coming for altar call. call altar call is not enough to get you born again. It gets you saved. But to be born anew and to be transformed, the Christ needs to be established in your heart. The degree to which the word of God finds expression in your life. The degree to which you have submitted to the principles of the kingdom. Is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord of your life. Are we, are we understanding? One of the biggest limitations I, I taught us that. There are two major limitations to the advancement of the kingdom. That the first... The Bible calls it the gate of hell. That is just a recap. And I told us that the gate of hell defines the scope of Satan and every arsenal that he brings. His tricks, his strategies that he brings to bring the whole world into deception. But that's not even the biggest limitation. The biggest of all limitations is the mind. Our mental alignment to the ways of the kingdom. This is what is responsible for your prosperity. This is what is responsible for your impact. This is what is responsible for the flow of God's power. Now, preachers have erroneously taught people. Every time you talk about the mind, preachers shift people to, they shift that topic to business people and entrepreneurs and, and um, um, proprietors and all those who have to deal with the corporate life. So here they are sweating and believing they are training their spirit. Whenever you talk about mind, they say, no, 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 it's, it's all right. I'm not a businessman. The mind is the access point for the spirit to find expression in your life. You ignore your mental development. You ignore the alignment of your mind to the government of the Christ. You will fail in life in every respect. I can never change you until I change your mind. I can never change you till I alter your ideology because your life revolves around your thinking, around your perception about life. There's nothing I can do about your current situation until you are willing to submit your mind to something better. It's God speaking to us. So let's read Proverbs 23. Verse 7. Help us, Holy Spirit. One to read. Just the first phrase. You don't need to read all of those ones down. One to read. For as he thinketh in his heart or in his mind, so is he. It equates the summation of your ideologies to the quality of your life. Meaning the quality of my life as an ambassador of the kingdom, as a husband, as a father, as a leader, is dependent on my, the sum total 
of the ideologies that inform my decisions. Profound truth. Profound truth. That a man's life is helplessly at the mercy of his mindset. I've done many teachings about mindsets and I will not stop until a transition happens. The key to persuasion is repetition. Not information. Repetition. When a truth is repeated, it, it becomes a priority to you. And that's the goal of this teaching. God is doing a mighty work in your life. God is transforming mighty men in this place. And he won't stop. He won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop till his church looks like him. He won't stop. He won't stop till you look just like him. You know why I must preach this? Because seated where you are is the destiny of thousands that have been connected to your grace and your life. And your refusal to rise will make thousands to go to hell. Millions to perish. Imagine if there was no Benny Hinn. Imagine if there was no Reinhard Bonke. Right? Imagine if all of the mighty men that have brought great impact in this generation did not rise. I refuse to let your tears stop me. I refuse to let your anger with me stop me. I will teach it until that transformation happens. You may not see a need to thank me now. But as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives. When you see the excellency of your life above that of your contemporaries. You will find a reason to say Lord I thank you. The training process is always difficult. Because mankind has been designed to live in a comfort zone. We are designed to live around an environment that massages our current level. But every time the word begins to come, the first thing that happens is your current mentality will resist it. Because it knows that it will have to choose to accept that it is wrong and change. And accepting faults is one of the biggest um, ego stinging things for mankind to say, oh, I'm wrong. I may not have gotten it well this way. So we prefer to excuse it away and remain. Friends live together for as long as they think together. The moment one begins to think above, the environment starts driving him away. Right? I'm challenging you because there's something about your life. Koinonia is an apostolic platform. Only with the eye of the spirit will you see the kind of mighty men that have been raised. There are more people. This crowd constitutes only less than 10% of the total people who will listen to this message. And so I'm speaking to nations. I'm speaking to individuals. I'm speaking to territories. Somebody will be listening to this message who is lying down at the end of his life and say, God, is this how my life will be? And God is saying there is a way out. The way out is not giving you money. The way out is not parting you when you do not deserve to be parted. The way out is to prune and build and to furnish. It may cost you tears. But let me tell you, anybody that loves you, see, a mentor, a mentor is not your friend. Are you getting what I'm saying? I taught the school of ministry students that there are three spiritual platforms on which reception and impartation happens number one a father and a son platform a transfer from a father to a son number two a transfer from a mentor to a mentee or an apprentice number three a transfer from a teacher to a student you cannot transfer knowledge from colleague to colleague no sir it's against the law of impartation that means every time you want to receive one must assume the position of the greater and another the lesser even if it is for the purpose of the impartation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So by the time, because many of us may watch people, if Pastor Jakes comes up right now to preach, I will not just stand and say, I'm the great man of God, he's my friend. No, I submit myself immediately to the grace that is teaching and immediately I begin to receive. Are you learning something? 
Society will teach you otherwise. That's why there are lots of failures outside. Let me tell you the truth. I give you a guarantee. If you listen to what I am giving you and you sit down honestly under these teachings, you will never, never be a disappointment to the kingdom. I give you that as a guarantee. But the problem is to what degree are we willing to submit ourselves to the dealings of God? To what degree? Every time we come to God, many of us come with our bag of errors and we sit down hoping that God will add to us. Sometimes he doesn't need to add. He needs to take from you. Because what you currently have is what is destroying you. There is an ideology that is resisting the power of God in your life. There is an ideology that is resisting the move of the spirit. There is an ideology that is limiting your financial life. There is an ideology that is limiting your ministry. Limiting every aspect of your life. And when you contend for light and you receive that light no power in existence has the capacity to keep you down not for too long hallelujah as a man thinketh in his heart so is he as i walk around as i travel around i've had the privilege of traveling to different territories i study culture a lot in fact whenever we travel for administration if time allows us we always take a little tour around the city to see the way of life of the people. I like to study how people think. I like to study what their priorities are. I like to study what, what constitutes a taboo for them. What is the scope of their ideology? And I am amazed. I see the reason why Africa is where it is. I see the reason why very few men out of a large crowd ever, ever, touch the true grace of God in their lives. I see the reason why though many go to school and graduate, they end up failures. Failures from the perspective of the kingdom. Failures in impacting their generation and being relevant for the kingdom. I see why zealous people will start out well and end as if God left them. There is something that we consistently violate. And that is the power of transformation. The power of transformation. The power of transformation. I can't tell you this enough, Koinonia. Listen to me. The power of transformation. You can rise from where you are. I don't care what the limitations are. Stop regretting what you are going through and what your father brought you into or what your mother brought you into. And concentrate on the transformation that will bring you up otherwise you will sit in that position of regret and watch your children later join you that's what has happened we have a generation of irresponsible people spiritually irresponsible mentally irresponsible physically irresponsible there has been a transgenerational game of blaming people one generation blaming another for their failures one generation blaming another Nigerians blame government Africans blame their parents they blame institutions our refusal to turn and say what can I do to live where I am Gideon was a little boy who was hiding he had of the miracles that happened and now he was there reduced and an angel appears to him and says oh thou mighty man of value can you be the changer of this pattern in a generation let me tell you something my message will mean very little to you and you will hate me if you are someone with a mindset that believes someone somewhere is responsible for your success and your advancement if you have that kind of mindset here your first assignment tonight is repent can we have the windows open i think the rain is hallelujah everyone say in the name of jesus i take full responsibility for my current position spiritually financially socially i take full responsibility and i am willing to pay the price to change that pattern say it one more time in the name of jesus 
I refuse resentment. I refuse blaming people. I make up my mind that from today, I take full responsibility for the outcome of everything in my life. That's right. That's the, the decision that begins to change your life. You say this among your colleagues and they will insult you. Some of you are even feeling nervous as you are saying this because it is very comfortable to believe your father is the reason why you are not serving God. That foolish man was a herbalist. But what of the mercy of God that has brought you to see the light? There are many ladies who believe it's the wrong training of their mothers that has stopped them from marriage. There are many people who believe. There are preachers, there are many pastors in different ministries who believe that the reason why they are not rising is because the geo or the man of God is not laying hands on them to do impartation. My challenge to you before we continue is that language of responsibility. Please pray one minute. Say, Lord, I make up my mind. Pray, pray, open your mouth. Don't just pray in your heart. Willingly and consciously before heaven, this day, this day, this day, the 22nd of May, I make up my mind that from today, I begin to take full responsibility for the outcome of my life. If any change will happen, it depends on you and God. If your generation must hear your voice, it depends on you and God. Pray. Zika pratoko soto lama karyada baladaba. Sheke te pretege de bosh. Pray. Le kata paka proto soto barike te bele de bokor yadaba. Pray. I choose to be different. I come from a family where no one has reason. Excuses here and there. We are from Kogi State, that's why. Excuses here and there. We are from the North, that's why. Excuses here and there. My father was a drunkard. My mother was a prostitute. I was born out of wedlock. Kill that excuse. It's a deception from the pit of hell. Manda kala prati gele boko so prandi geri ataba hashara balada bara 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 bara. I'm a lady. That's why they should take care of me. Kill that excuse. I have failed. That's why I tried and failed. Kill that excuse. I gave God a chance and He didn't do anything. Kill that excuse. Hallelujah. Listen. Never try to waste your time. I'm giving you an advice that will bless you. Never try to waste your time investing in people who have not come to a point where they are willing to take responsibility for their lives. You will be casting your pearl before swine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never waste your time and energy attempting to communicate truths to people who have not indicated a genuine passion for transformation. You will waste your time. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart. The summation of my ideologies. So I believe my father is a wicked man. Because he would have sold the car and given me the money. Because I had to fend for school for myself. And that ideology becomes your template of interpreting life. Hallelujah. Let me share a few things. Your mindset determines your response to God, to people, to Satan, to challenges, and to success. Your mindset, 
your ideologies determines your response to God, people, Satan, challenges, and ultimately success. The Bible keeps telling us again and again. Solomon speaking again and again and encouraging believers of the need to guard our heart. God is in it. Let's look at that scripture very quickly. Proverbs chapter I believe 4 4 verse 23 Am I right? 4 verse 23. Let's look at it quickly. Yes. It says, keep your heart with all what? Diligence, seriousness, tenacity. It says, for out of it are the issues of life. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen to me. Please look at me. I submit to you. I have seen people suffer. I have seen the bitter weep that the negligence to this truth will bring to any life and bring to any family. You can choose to listen to what I am telling you and contend for change. Or you can stand where you are and watch life whip you until you lose your faith, lose your salvation and ultimately end up in hell. Is that serious? Keep your heart. It is your responsibility. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it out of your ideologies are the issues, the decisions that frame your life and destiny. Your mindset about culture, your mindset about women, your mindset about God, your mindset about money and prosperity, your mindset about increase, your mindset about hard work and diligence. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you. Wishing has never changed the life of any man. Wishing only, only gives you a false emotional consolation. Oh, I wish I would be anointed like Pastor James. Oh, I wish I would be able to do this. Oh, I wish that God will use me. I know he will use me one day. Forget that deceit. There is what you do here and now that makes you know whether you are usable or otherwise let me give you a little preview into the financial series that we're going to be having in it I teach on the power of decisions do you know the difference between a decision and a wish this is it I want to drink water is a decision that's the water there I want to drink water is a wish or a strong desire I decide to drink water means I set it as a goal and I am ready to find out what it takes to get that water are you seeing that now a decision is different from a desire in that a decision is backed up with the willingness to satisfy the conditions to get that result many people wish for the anointing oh I wish I wish Many people wish for a big church. Many people wish for a million naira or million dollar status. I'm a millionaire in the name of Jesus Christ. No power will stop me. Uh, stories. This is why people look at Christians and think, they think we're idiots. Because we keep fooling and kidding ourselves again and again. Say I decide. To make impact i decide to be relevant i decide to do big things for the kingdom hallelujah guard your heart with all diligence why because your life is a reflection of of, of your ideologies i've taught this but let me recap on it again very quickly remember i told you that there is a law the law of manifestation and that law is that your physical reality eventually becomes a reflection of your mindset. 
the inner workings of your mind is what will eventually become your physical reality. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means your physical life is a revelation of the summation or the quality of your ideologies. By and large, your mentality about prosperity will show physically. By and large, your mentality about God and the principles of the kingdom will show. By and large, your mentality about marriage will show in children calling you a loving daddy or a stupid Dracula who is killing them. By and large. By and large, your mentality about success and productivity will speak otherwise. Meaning, our physical environment right now is a gradual reflection of the reality in our mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? Watch this. Compare a general overseer of a ministry or president or whatever. Key, or let me use a, a term that is now. Compare a CEO, right? Of a company who sits down in a large office. You know how intimidating the office can be. With AC, flat screen, right? All kinds of things. Cup of coffee, tea, all kinds of things. And a secretary around. And you see the poor people in the company angry at their director, wicked man. He's the one enjoying. And the megad is there opening gates hundreds of times a day and receiving 10 or 15,000. And the megad convinces himself that the ogre is not fair. This man is not doing anything. He just sits down on a chair, signs papers, writes a few things, and he's getting millions. My challenge is this transfer them for two months transfer them meaning tell the may god we hereby give you this office is yours for two months and tell the ogre go to the gate the ogre is going to do something in that gate that will make people stop coming to the office they will start waiting at the gate there is a mentality are you getting my point he's going to look and say is there something we can do is there something we can do right there at the gate he will start consultancy services right there at the gate he will think and say how can i reduce this effort how can i reduce the physical effort and then he may create a chain or a rope where he just sits down and drive or try to make a digital gate are you seeing that now whereas the other man sits down holding one wood and metallic detector and and and, and a, the keys bunch of keys to a gate Meanwhile, let's go to our man in the office there. The man is in the office and when he sits down, the next thing is he opens the fridge, sees apples, dates, all kinds of things and he says, my soul find rest. He forgets. No, no, no. See how cheap his mindset is. He forgets that that company is at the mercy of his decisions and he's eating. And quickly he sees some little money and he carries that money quickly and hides it. And he thinks, what can I sell quickly? And they say, oh, God, generator has spoiled. He say, leave it there. In two months, that office becomes his mindset. Are you seeing that now? You come in and see it dirty, scattered. They've sold a lot of things. They've sold the company generator. They've done all sorts of things. Right? Workers are not paid. Whereas you find out that the the blessed man, the CEO, has changed the gate. And he will make it become something. What is the difference? Their mindset. They think the difference is money. They think the difference is expensive suits and expensive cars. No. Those things are a reflection of something. When you see a man mightily used by God, his life is a reflection of something. Are we, are we following? Are we together? The next time you see a man you consider to be anointed or blessed, do not envy what you see. Try to buy into their mind and transfer it to yourself and your life will follow suit. Are we blessed? That's why success is, is transferable. If I can transfer to you what is in my mind, you will be like me. But you will stop at my limit. 
if I can transfer to you what I have and challenge you to rise higher, you will be higher than me. You see that? Preachers preach out of the abundance of their mindset. A preacher who is not, for instance, an entrepreneur and knows nothing about leadership and organization has a pattern that he teaches people. All he would tell people is, just pray and be serious. The God of favor, God of honor, God of this, the God who located me will locate you and the people shout amen. And they stop there and they become a congregation of weak and beggarly people. The preacher himself, not knowing why he's successful. He thinks he's successful because he's preaching. No. Guard your heart. There is a mentality you have right now that is stopping friends from you. There are some of you, you can never have friends because there are certain mindsets and ideologies that drive every destiny helper who comes into your life. Something about you resents people from you and if you do not take the time to study it and change and say i'm like that my mother never had any friend only me you see it the transference let me talk about two quick ideologies or mental attitudes that have sponsored failure in the lives of people right Number one is the mindset that bets what we know today to be low self-esteem. Write that word down. It's very important. I'm about to say something that will bless you. What is low self-esteem or what we call complex? Please look up. Low self-esteem is the feeling or the mindset that brings a man to a position where he believes or he is convinced consciously or subconsciously that you are not good enough that you are perpetually at a state of disadvantage that there is always something you need to do to your life to meet up to a standard a status quo are you getting my point it's a terrible mindset a terrible mental state of being because it produces dangerous fruits and we're about to see a few of them let me tell you the foolishness of many people in society from preachers to businessmen to fathers to leaders is motivated by this poisonous mindset subtle but dangerous low self-esteem what does low self-esteem do low self-esteem when it is matured in a man becomes the sponsor for an extravagant life becomes the sponsor for aggression and looking down on people becomes the sponsor uh, for downplaying people as a way of trying to show your relevance so all that fight for titles all that fight for recognition all that impatience that drives people into living an extravagant life is primarily because of a deep-seated mentality of low self-esteem. Are we blessed? So a lady believes that until she plants a particular kind of hair, she can be beautiful and guys will not see her. Wherever she got that ideology and then she finds out that the weave on is 15,000 and that becomes a goal. She's under pressure, borrowing money, trying to prove all kinds of things and then when she buys it and puts it she's hoping that now she has been able to attain a status quo it's god speaking to us so we have preachers with their clubs and societies right that is based on something they believe they have to do to match up so a man of god thinks i can teach but i can't prophesy and his complex begins to sponsor him to look for prophetic grace anyhow are you getting my point even to the point of witchcraft and when he gets it he now believes that when that prophetic grace is added to me i will be like so 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 man of god are you seeing that now 
a poisonous mindset. This is what is responsible for the hatred of brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers. A father will fight with his wife because the father believes that this woman is a CEO and I am an assistant director and his complex makes him feel do something to bring her down. Are we blessed now? Low self-esteem. A mindset that stops people from moving and taking the path to success gradually. Low self-esteem has been the reason for incessant impatience, especially in young people. They want to buy the car now. They want to marry now. Right? They want sharp, sharp money now. Sharp, sharp success. You want to start a ministry and in four months have a record-breaking 5,000 crowd. Low self-esteem. To prove and you say, go and tell them in the village, God is at work here. You see that? Tell who? Them. That means there is a them you have been working for. There is somebody that you say, I must show this man that I am nothing. It's not enough reason. Is God helping us? Many of us have lost precious friends because of low self-esteem. Our low self-esteem makes us to interpret even a sincere compliment from a negative angle. Because you believe that you must do something to match up. Who is God speaking to tonight? We have all sorts of enemies and all sorts of people. I look at people who I know at the level I am now, I cannot even wear the clothes they are wearing and some of them are students. You know that God just blessed them and opened a small door for them. But that low self-esteem, especially ladies, sisters, say amen. Especially these ladies. You will see a tiny lady moving around. Self-esteem is pushing her and she goes to meet an un one big ungodly military officer. You know that she can destroy her life because she wants to say, I am going out with somebody in Jaji. Right? And that, oh, you think I don't know. You are joking. <laughs> is God speaking to us? There are many preachers they start preaching now and they say, Kai, if I go, they won't, they, won't, they won't know that. They won't acknowledge me. So let me start going on air. And the grace to go on air has not been released. So the resources to back it up is not there. And they keep yoking their members week after week. There are business people who start a business now and they say they want to do international business. They go and die in Italy or go and die in Brazil. Right? Low self-esteem. Being a motivation for many things. That's why you see preachers. Come, please. Look at men of God, for instance. When another man of God is about to see one, everybody is standing to see who will greet who. As a proof. Right? Meaning that the one who greets one is accepted. You see, we carry our villages. We carry our pain. We carry our backgrounds. Mix it with the anointing. Mix it with ministry. And off we go misleading many people. So he comes to me and then I cannot greet him. There are geos who will never turn and greet their people and just say, God bless you. How are you? No. Because if how can I greet him? You greet my boy. You see that? Your village is haunting you. Your background is haunting you. A poisonous mindset haunting you. Don't just laugh. I'm, I'm serious, very serious as I speak here. There are ladies who believe they have to behave in a certain way to show they are not cheap. If, I, if you talk softly to guys, they will joke with you, give it to them and they will respect you. That's your mentality. So God brought your husband 10 times and you drove him 10 times. Because something in your mind, you live around the mediocre just like you in the room. And all of them convince themselves. It's amazing how we mess up and people clap for us. You do something very stupid that demands flogging. And you go and meet people who think like you. And they say, guy, guy you represented us. <laughs> Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Listen, listen. You can decide to make up your mind and change. Or live in that false sense of success. There are some of us moving around, lying to people. Oh, we are millionaires. We are this and that and that. We are this and that and that. You carry your friend's car. You say it's, it's your car. 
you, you find that all of those things, some of us are sitting right now, aside from maybe you just beg somebody, the clothes you are wearing is not your own. The watch you are wearing is not your own. The shoe you are wearing is not your own. The phone you are using is not your own. You borrowed your friend's phone for three days. What for? What's the point? What are you proving? An Android device? Shame on you. If that becomes the whole circumference upon which your life revolves in, that mankind, we make ourselves too cheap. And so we do not celebrate what we are and where we are. We do not celebrate what God is doing in our lives. We rush levels. We are not thorough in the dealings of God in our lives. And we end up with casualties. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. That mindset of inferiority right now is what has made some people not to relate with certain friends that can help them. Because you think this person is a villager. My, if, I, if I react like that, no, 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 no. There are some of us, if somebody looks at you in the secret place and speaks his language, not just to mock you, but just a nice conversation, let's connect. You say, please don't embarrass me here. Please, I've told people my, my, I'm half caste. My father is from where and where. Don't come and, 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 and fall my hand here. Hallelujah. I once was talking to a preacher and he looked at me and I said, do I know how much his, his suit is that he was wearing? And I was shocked. In the middle of a destiny molding conversation, you stop me and ask me how much your suit is what? What in the world is that? I just, the anointing just lifted. I just knew that there's nothing to tell this person. Say in the name of Jesus. I am proud of my level. I will rise gradually. There's no point trying to fake success. I will pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Very important. Low self-esteem. Many of us here are suffering from it. It's what is responsible for gossip. It's what is responsible for backbiting. That spirit, that feeling of low self-esteem is the attitude that will sponsor your not celebrating the success of others. So the moment Mary says, I just bought a jeep. Say, Mary, what a jeep. Where did she get the money from? Mary, Mary that I know. Something is fishy. I must find out. Find out what? And you see, when you are determined to find out things, you will always find something. Is that true? Low self-esteem. Number two. Is the mindset that leads to what I call an uncultured use of words. Uncultured use of words. Psalms 141 verse 3, an uncultured use of words. God is helping us tonight. An uncultured use of words. Psalm 141 verse what? Psalm 141 verse 3. Everyone read. One to read. It said, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Look at me. There are many of us right now where you are seated. The devil of your destiny. That which has chained you and made nonsense out of your life. Is this gate called your lips. Hallelujah. The gate of uncultured words. Many of us have killed the dreams of people because we spoke something to them. Many of us have destroyed the destinies of people because we spoke words. Many of us have torn friends apart because of an uncultured word. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know that these decoration people, there's a way they behave? Uncultured words. Many of us have had witchcraft attack because our mouth introduced us to things we should keep. 
How do you know? See that lady, that fine one, the other one, that very fine one. That's my wife. In fact, I'm even planning. I think I should get to Germany, hopefully. There's one morning I'm waiting, and while you are talking, the elder is nodding. Say, where did you even say you are going again? Say, Germany. Everything has been working. All of a sudden, everything scatters. Our mouth. There are many of us, you plan to buy a car in 10 years. You have, I'm not saying confession of faith. Telling people, look, in fact, right now, the last time we went to Kotono, and it's a lie. Pressure to say things that should not be. Set a watch. Put a gate, oh God, in my mouth that I will know when to speak. Nobody mocked you because they did not know you were barren. You carried your mouth, running it around, telling people and saying, don't tell anybody. For what? Say, don't, I don't know you, or don't tell anybody. It's me that said, Benga's wife, this and that and that happened. How we have put ourselves in trouble because we cannot shut our mouths. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was you that revealed to an armed robber that 10 million came into your father's account. They came, broke his head, broke your house, broke everything, broke the safe, removed the money. And he said, Kai, this world is a wicked world. Set a guard over my mouth. Let me tell you, you must learn to know when to speak. And when to keep quiet. Many of you have made fools out of yourself. Because your father came and met you. And said I'm leaving your mother. And instead of you to be matured. You say leave her Jared. She's a wicked woman. Only for you to hear her own side. And she said there's something I've not told you. Your father has been cheating on me from the day you were born. I've been enduring. And then you stand stupefied. Because you have backed your father. And ran your mouth against your mother. Are you getting what I'm saying? The height of mental maturity in terms of communication is when you know when to speak and when to keep quiet. When to speak and when to keep quiet. Some of you people come to you for counseling and say, I've been fornicating or I've been suffering from masturbation. I've been doing immediately. You feel you say, ah, God is changing life. So say, what happens? Say, Man, the rate at which masturbation is disturbing people. I can't, ah, ah some brothers that you don't even expect you see that keep a watch oh god over my mouth keep a watch a guy came and met you and said look oh um I'm, 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 we are going to get married let me just calm down i'm trusting god for some finances to come before you knew it you have sent text to 11 ladies you chief bridesmaid you this and then later the guy will say i'm not doing and the friends say how far our marriage hey, god is working and you are under pressure because you've run your mouth saying what you should not say the Bible says, a word spoken in due season. There is a due season for communication. Is God helping us? Mindsets. 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 Many of our parents go and run their mouths in the villages. Oh, I've been promoted. I'm a millionaire now. In fact, the last check entered and they said, there's one village project. Please, we're allocating the task of five million naira to you. And you see that the children are crying and suffering. And the man is building a community somewhere. Because your mouth, your mouth destroyed you. One time one lady came and met me. She thought it was good news. Very respectable um, man of God that she was going out with. And I think one time, I don't know. Let me assume the guy was carried away. And he wanted to make advances on her. And do a lot of things. And you know, she advised him. And at the end, he felt bad. He said, look. I don't know what came over me. Let's pray this and that. And then she came to talk to me. And she, she thought it was going to be a good news. She says, honestly, I need to tell you something. It's not every man of God that is a man of God. Who, I knew where she was going to. I listened to her. Uh, there are some things you don't come to me for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then she came and met me. That ah, this and that and that. This person did this. Can I imagine? That this person did this. She was so disappointed. She's still being disappointed. She still did this. And I said, shame on you. One. Because you were, was it not in a room? Was it outside? It happened. You went to the room. You were also tempted. You will not accept that part of your role. The role you played in seducing him. You, are you saying you did not see the advancement coming? You were enjoying the attention until it got to the limit where you think you can take it. Is that not how it happens? 
it was holding you doing all kinds of things you were enjoying it when you felt it will now cross the boundary what you call boundary you now started talking and you are coming to report him rather than praying and humble yourself i'm not justifying immorality i'm talking about the foolishness of unguarded uncultured communication and the way she was talking to me i know she has told more than hundreds of people right there and you 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 destroy now listen we are very disciplined people by the grace of God in this ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it, many people have run down the churches and the ministry of others because of certain things. Especially this immorality thing. People come for counseling and they talk. They say all kinds of things. They say you are the... I, I remember one lady who met me and said, um, you are the only man of God in a long time who has talked to me without sleeping with me. I said, it's a sign that you need deliverance. While you are concentrating and saying people are doing this, there is a wicked spirit at work in you that is destroying people. Rather than thinking you are so seductive, you better find out that the hand of God needs to come upon your life to change it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Unguarded communication unguarded communications matters that don't concern you it's amazing you hear people talking about their father talking about their mother talking about their sister a lady met me and said ah that uh, her sister just got married though sharp sharp she's now pregnant i say shut your mouth you are you, you can imagine the stupidity of your communication look at what drives your mind Look, I'm teaching you this because it will save you trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you are hated by people right now because you have joined the heads of too many people, including your destiny helpers. Every time they mention your name to live to people, say, may God forbid. I'd rather die than to give this person a job. This person is a destroyer of destiny. Have you seen people like that? You come in between two people who are in a relationship and you say, my brother, I'm a Christian, no. Oh, uh, I won't hide this thing from you. There's something I want to tell you about this lady. I saw the way you are blind flower, and blind f buying flower, and all of these things. All these things you are doing. What is this lady has been rocking her life since she was 13? You are just coming innocently. You don't know you. You think she's a nice lady, and the guy say, eh. "Well, I'm not saying she has HIV, but who knows? If there's something, go for a test. Mount. Some of us listen. Mindsets. Listen to me." It's not just to say we want to be successful. Are you getting what I'm saying? I remember when Benny Hinn had his scandal, for instance. Many people in the body of Christ did not stay to find out what happened. Everybody started moving, running down Benny Hinn. The following Sunday, many pastors were preaching. When they said they caught him with Paula White. Right now, the Creflo Dollar, you see it on, on news. The Creflo Dollar asked his congregation, to buy him 65 million naira jet. That's not true. That's not what happened. Are you seeing that now? Everybody, those who have been angry. There are people angry today that Kenneth Copeland is flying his jet. There are people angry at all kinds of, of, of things. And we run our mouth. We say all kinds of things. People have called their mothers witches. Called their fathers witches. Listen. Give yourself a warning and discipline your mouth. And say, Lord, keep my mouth shut when it needs to be shut. And to speak when it needs to speak. Hallelujah. Unguarded communications. They tell a man of God, lead offering. And he comes and says, uh, as I was leading the offering, the Lord said this. Stand up. To mean that he wants to show that he's a man of God. And you spend one hour just for offering unguarded use of your mouth you just disgrace yourself and threw yourself in ashes are we growing tonight some of these issues look little but this is what makes leaders out of people notice that leaders are calm people they are people who evaluate things they are people who look into things because one day somebody is going to say something about your life your ministry your business something is that true i remember when one woman i think somebody met me and said one woman was saying this koinonia we emphasize the holy spirit not jesus he said that's witchcraft that's signs of the end time and the person was hoping that i would respond to it and i just kept quiet i said glory be to jesus and that was the end of it because sometimes 
I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus that may you not run your mouth in the presence of your enemy and give him the key to destroy your life. From the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks and then it ruins your life and then you close doors of destiny over your life. Many things have been shot in our lives because of these mindsets. There are many others, but I decided to pick two to talk about. Still, the mental transformation. That God will raise people in this place who are leaders indeed. Somebody comes to gossip to you, and immediately he finishes the gossiping about Tosin. You tell the person, let's hold hands and pray for her. And the person is tongue and embarrassed and doesn't know what to do. Tomorrow they mark you as a real Christian. Do you know why many preachers' messages are not strong on the pulpit? They know you outside of pulpit. They know your life of gossiping and backbiting. They know your insincerity in handling the things of the kingdom. And so when you say God will bless you, the words are little. They don't carry you. May God give you the gift of a friend that has discipline with words. May God give you the gift of a friend that will use his words to bless you. You may not understand the implication of what I'm teaching you. Well, I don't want us to just say, Lord, send the rain. I'm teaching you practical issues that will make you exceptional. People will look at your life and your ideologies will be compelling. And people will come and say, why, what is, what is the framework of your mind? And you will let them know that the Lord Jesus Christ has transformed your life. You will see jobs you did not apply for come to you only because you, of your calmness. Everything is not just about your certificate. You will find out when you finish that it takes more than certificate to reign. It's God speaking to us. Preachers, God cannot trust you with innocent people because you cannot hear their cases and keep quiet. God cannot trust you with, with all kinds of people. There are pastors, God cannot trust them with large members because the day you know that one member is a billionaire, that day, everybody in the church will know that this guy is a billionaire and they will strangle him. Everybody will come and say, we are soliciting for financial support and run him down because he gave you tight of his billion. There are people in this place seated who are dangerously prosperous. Don't think everybody is struggling. There are people seated quietly here. I know them. You see that? There are people here who are dangerously anointed. Graced of God. There are people here whose parents, if you know the status, the societal status of their parents, you won't even go and knock their office yet. They are calm and The day I found out that one of our ladies here was the daughter of one prominent man, I was shocked. I was shocked at the humility and simplicity of that lady. The day I found out that this big man, this is the daughter, I said, my goodness, what humility. There are some of us. Your, your father was given caretaker or something of a local government. And, and you won't let anybody rest. I know that I'm hard on us tonight. But it's because I love you. I want to make leaders out of us. Not just men who are tongue talkers. But people who have the wisdom for living. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never sit down and entertain gossip. Be the one to drive that atmosphere away so that God will come and bless you. Never be the one. Let it not be your room that when they want to run down people, your room is the place where they meet. Say, let's meet at, at uh, that usual joint. And when you come, say, hey, before they reach, say, sit down first. Let me be serving you minerals as you do it. No. Let your room be the place where when you talk of destiny, when someone's life is down, he says, I know that I will go to Sam's house. Because if I can find my way there, I will find God. I will find hope. My neighbor has one friend that I told her in my, she may be here listening to me. In my opinion, that is one of the nicest women I have met in my life. And the most sincere woman. That my neighbor's friend. 
I've seen my neighbor two times when you know our regular human activities challenges. She shared her testimony here. And that woman will come to her and kneel down and pray and cry. She will come and see my neighbor washing and come immediately and collect the clothes and wash for her. I, there was a time she came, there was nobody. You know, sometimes I lock my door and you won't know I'm around. She came in and there was nobody. Do you know what she did? She laid her hands on my neighbor's door and started weeping and said, Lord, will you open the door for my friend and bless my friend? She didn't know I was listening. Hi. I said, oh God, will you give our people in Koinonia wives like this? How many of you can be that true that you use your words well only to bless? Will you make up your mind that beginning from today, I will set a guard over my mouth? my mouth will not be the reason why i would destroy the life of another anything that proceeds from my mouth will only be that which carries blessings in israel if you cause somebody they will kill you because they understand the implication of words is god speaking to us tonight many of us have made ourselves cheap when you started out people respected you because you were a man of few words right now you have become a talkative and gradually you see that your respect has been going down have you seen people like that one moment they are rest in fact when they come they say sir good afternoon at the end of the conversation the woman say okay my son i've heard about you whereas where you came she said kind of man of god i i covet the grace upon your life but you threw away your honor everybody write this word down honor honor these are the principles that bring honor to your life value honor more than money value honor more than reputation money cannot give you honor but honor will give you blessings honor the ability to recognize and reward your difference is what we call honor uncommon principles that will make you exceptional tonight's teaching may look simple but it is indeed powerful As a man think it your mindset i'm doing a re-engineering in our mind a recalibration changing our perceptions from our various cultural standpoints and connecting us to the attitude of the kingdom that which make kings that which make nobles that which makes men wise that which opens cheap doors for greatness Two more things and we are going to pray. How do I engage? I've said it but then I will say it again and again. How do I engage in renewing my mind when I find out that there is something flawed in my life? How do I start? Now I've found out that I have a poisonous communication. Now I've found out that I'm a bitter and envious person. I found out that I'm a jealous person. Negative dimension of jealousy. I found out that I'm suffering a lot of complex. I found out that I'm suffering failure and defeat. How do I begin to rise? Number one, you must admit and accept that you desire that there, there is a need for transformation in that area of your life. Transformation will never come till you are humble enough to accept. There are some of us here, God has been blessing us with all kinds of financial blessings. But something about our mindset keep throwing money out of our lives. Favor brings money to your life. Wisdom throws it out of your life. There are many of us who ministerial doors open up to us. But the people never call us back. Because there is something about our mindset. You go to preach in a church. You don't study the way the church setting is. You just stand and run your mouth and say anything, anyhow to anybody. You go to a church that is predominantly elders. Your packaging and communication must suit the context of your audience. You go to a church that is filled with intellectuals. I've preached in all kinds of churches. And they like me. I've preached in all kinds of places. Because I pay the price to understand the people I'm communicating to. It's God speaking to us. So God opened the door of ministry. You now went to preach. You were preaching in, in, a, in a military cantonment. And you were speaking as if you were talking to market women. 
because you did not know how to communicate her right. And they said, please, don't bring this man again. This man came to embarrass us. Our ogre was here. We thought God would glorify himself. God glorified himself, but this man, Kai, don't bring him again. And the door closes. And you see a man, six months, they've not called you to bless anybody. Not because you are not anointed. You have the anointing, but these mental adjustments. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us, somebody comes to your life and the mindset of courtesy and greeting the person, you just come and say, I am apostle, so, 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 and so. This and that and that. There was a young man that was standing, well, while I returned from the trip, I was, I just ran to quickly refresh and come, and the young man just stood there. And I was asking the protocol, why is this guy here? He said he came for prayer. I said, by this time, this is Koinonia, I can't see you now. He said, I've been coming, and every time I come, I find out that your door is locked. So I decided to come now and stay. You see that? On a very good day, I would have said, so, it's like nobody has introduced me to you, Abi. Protocol, can you let him know the kind of... No, 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 no. Yes, he did what was wrong, but at least solve the problem at that point since he's there and bless him and then show him the right way to do it. That guy now will live loving me more, but he can live hating me and say, this person, he's going right there to go and preach, but this is a soul dying. So is your genuine test for souls true? Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Little foxes, brothers and sisters, spoil the vine little adjustments that we need to make to our lives to make us exceptional many of us are anointed no doubt but many of us cannot reign because the wisdom that makes for dominion the wisdom that makes men exceptional the wisdom that makes people extraordinary is deficient in our lives that mental adjustment one more time lay your hands on your head and say Lord Jesus I make up my mind to make the required adjustments for my greatness. I make up my mind to contend for change and contend for adjustment. I make up my mind to lay aside the old and to pick up the new. Hallelujah. I told you two more things. Write it down very quickly. Number one, Two more things I'm adding to what I've said that will make you exceptional. The attitude of courtesy. Courtesy. You know what we call courtesy? Decorum. Respect for people. That attitude that gives honor and courtesy and respect. Another word you can put is respect. The mindset where you hold people in high esteem is an adjustment that will make the rain fall in your life. It will make you a magnet. By and large, after preaching, there are things you do that makes you lovable. It makes you inviting. Look at me. Come, Sam. If Sam comes and finishes preaching, watch this. And then I come up as a man of God and I just collect the mic from him. And I say, Sam, that's nice. My boys are really growing. You see that? Watch this. Am I anointed? Yes. Do I love God? Do I love souls? Do you think my relationship with Sam will be sustainable? No. Because I simply violated his self-worth to prove a point. There's no attitude of respect and courtesy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you are higher or lower than that person, that attitude of honor and courtesy. And I pick up the mic, Sam, God bless you. Everybody, let's celebrate the hand of God upon Sam. Sam, thank you. You are a great blessing. I honor you. Thank you so much. You see that? Courtesy. At once, Sam will love me and Sam will reward me by increasing my self-worth and my honor in his mind. See, this is what makes some leaders, although they are silent, the reverence that people give to them is almost like, like human worship. There is something they are doing. They have transferred honor to their subordinates and they are receiving the harvest of that honor back. Are you learning something? 
never usurp your subordinates to prove that you are mighty you are a fool if you do that transfer honor to them some of them will be rebellious but it's a law that cannot be broken the honor will return to you a hundredfold is God speaking to us the mentality of courtesy ladies one act of courtesy can open your marital destiny you have fasted for 40 days but your attitude no courtesy you give a gentleman something you cannot even give him with 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 courtesy help me with that handkerchief eh, take hello what are you even saying again take and whereas this guy has been looking from afar oh lord do i go or do i not go and immediately he sees that nonsense he plots the graph and says no this is not what god showed me and he turns back are you anointed yes do you pray in tongues yes but it has stopped the door of marriage am i speaking to us some of us our attitude of being rude rude to people courtesy i make it as a point of duty i make it as a point of duty as much as possible even when i am rebuking people they know that in that rebuke i love them i sent a text to the leaders i think it was yesterday or today appreciating all of them for handling the ministry activities and doing everything in my absence i'm still going to tell them again during the, our leaders meeting because i love them i honor the leaders in this ministry I respect the grace of God upon their life and I, I thank God for the grace and the opportunity and the privilege of working with them. That is the reason why no matter what happens when you come outside, you must find some chairs. I rebuke the protocol most times when I come and see people standing. Why? Because of honor. I honor the fact that you left your house and came here. Are you seeing that you are not just coming to, to Koinonia because I'm anointed? There is an atmosphere that unconsciously honors you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are churches you go and you are treated like a piece of rag. The only person who deserves to be honored is the man of God. And members say, I can't stay here. Is the man warded? Yes. Is he anointed? Yes. But he does not understand the organizational principles of sustaining success. Please learn it. Courtesy learn to be cautious learn to treat people with honor and respect greet people greet people don't say this person when i was in ss3 was please leave all those things greet people oh benga how are you um abiodu how are you when i came in i saw jakes i gave him a nice hug and i just come and say i'm no 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 say i receive grace to honor men Say, I receive grace to show courtesy. If somebody offends you, handle the situation in wisdom. Don't just hit things in a way that you scatter the opportunities of tomorrow because you are trying to respond to the pain of today. There are roommates who cannot talk to themselves again because of that mutual respect of honor. And you, when people honor you, reciprocate it back. You become foolish when you are only receiving and not giving. If Tosin looks at me now and says, Ah, says something that I like, I will find something to reciprocate. And so you become a friend of everybody. When people are suffering from complex, they run to you because you have an atmosphere that says you are welcome. You have an atmosphere. When I finish Koinonia here, I've been, I've been tired since morning. But I have to stand here to at least the people are joining a line that is already embarrassing for me because i know some of the people standing in that line it's not like there are some helpless people but they humble themselves and they stand and to be able to do that i give them a hug i talk to them with courtesy all our little children that come to hug me here i honor them that's why immediately after service they come around you the little children sit near you as they are sharing the grace they are running away from you something about your life is driving them that's how a business partner will look at you and say you don't have the skill for business but there is an attitude there's something about you i want to do business with you there is a business of hundreds of millions that i want to do with you and you step into favor 
favor that you will never recover from. There are doors of ministry that have been opened to me today that I know should never have been opened. But because I honored my way to them, I treated people with courtesy. And I didn't know when I met them again and they were the ones who advocated that I be blessed. It's God speaking to us. The last thing I want to talk about is the mentality of endurance. Endurance. Help us, Holy Spirit. Just give me five minutes and we'll pray. Everybody say endurance. Say it, endurance. The Bible puts it this way. He that endures to the end. Everybody say endure to the end. Many people will never taste of the fruit of true success because we gas out. We do not have the staying power. Listen, listen, listen. That's why the ministry of prayer is inevitable if you want to finish strong. Endurance. Endurance. In your journey to greatness, you will endure. You will endure hardship. You will endure misunderstanding. You will endure misinterpretation. You will endure a lot. You will make sacrifices. You will endure hunger. But he that endures, let me tell you, when you see a blessed man, respect him. Don't ever see any man, either in the corporate world or in the ministry that is truly lifted and trivialize what God has done. Never want my crown until you see the scars on my hand. Every crown has a scar on the hand. Are you, are, you, are you getting this? I'm rounding up. I'm speaking to you. That illusion that greatness will just happen to you is a dream. Wake up. That illusion that somebody will become successful and then you enter his success just like that. I'm telling you it's a dream. Wake up. So while you are there running people down, realize that if you must be great, your own curriculum of endurance is waiting for you. No matter how you are, there are people today who misunderstand koinonia. There are people today who misinterpret what we are doing. We have been persecuted in our respect. Don't you think it's everybody that loves Joshua Selman? There are people when you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the Lord Jesus. There are people if you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the devil and the antichrist. All together is what builds dexterity for ministry. I remember when the protocol started responding to calls and the rest. I received a lot of backlashes from people. Are you trying to say you are too busy now, you cannot respond to us? Why should protocol be endurance? But right now, it has proven to be an excellent system. Endurance. Are you willing to endure? Many of us do not want to be talked bad about. Sorry for you as far as success is concerned. Let me tell you, it's a cross that every great man must carry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You want anointing, but you don't want the persecution that comes with it. You are dreaming. Oh, they will talk against you. They will say, how are we sure that anointing is genuine? How are we sure the miracles are real? How are we sure? This one that have not been around now for two weeks. <laughs> Somebody can say, I knew it. Maybe he went to collect power. <laughs> he went to collect power for the next level. Listen, listen. Never be under pressure to prove your innocence. There is a law. You can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. Be comforted by the immutability of kingdom laws. And do not be under pressure to prove any point. If somebody meets somebody and says, Benga, I'm suspecting that he has been sleeping with prayer band ladies. Don't try me. Me. God knows. We, no, 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 no. You can do nothing against the truth. The truth was buried after three days. It resurrected. You can't hide truth for long. No, sir. No, sir. Keep your sacrifice. Endure. I'm giving you a mindset. Realize that success does not come on a platter of gold. 
the favor of God does not take away the need for endurance. You will endure hardship. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will endure hardship. To be prosperous financially, you will make sacrifices. You will make mistakes. You will learn a lot. To grow in ministry, you will have to learn a lot of lessons through pain, sweat, and blood. I know my message is not attractive, but this is what will make you uncommon. endurance endurance endure hardship as a faithful soldier of Christ you went to win souls nothing happened you went for that meeting you thought the power of God would move nothing happened and you seem to live in shame don't worry keep fasting keep praying I know you went and it looked like they dread you you went to sing and you lost your key you lost your voice you embarrassed don't worry let them keep laughing don't be under pressure to prove anything and say no is i can sing oh what happened that day is i had kata forget about all those explanations kata or no kata continue a day will come you will be noted for persistence and your critics will become the advocates of your lifting when you endure if you give up you make the prophecy of your critics true. You make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. God is speaking to someone. We are rounding up. That all you need is to keep doing what you are doing. I know they are talking about you at home. Your prayer life has brought a lot of persecution. But endure. Keep praying. Sister, they've told you you will marry the Holy Spirit. No problem. Keep praying. They've called you Mother Mary. And now you are ashamed. You cannot even hold your Bible again. Endure. Listen, it's an irrefutable law of greatness. An irrefutable law. I thank God today for the sacrifices of endurance. I thank God for the times when I did not give up in my life. Today, it has translated to the salvation of millions. The transformation of lives seated here right now listening to me are people who need to endure i know you have been taught that if it is of god it must come cheap and easy no sir there is a system in the kingdom where men pass through the cross to get the crown this is a very deep teaching you must endure we are going to pray oh i will endure no matter what it will take I will endure as you are sitting down right now there may not be one naira in your pocket but endure keep tightening. some of you aside from boss you may trek home endure some of you you go and receive as old as you are you still receive all kinds of beating from your elderly ones endure and you see the hand of god upon your life endure who is god speaking to some of you are spilling over and it looks bad. But God is speaking to you tonight. Endure. Don't worry. It looks like one year is a long time. Two years is a long time. But don't worry. Like the twinkling of an eye, you will come out. But as you are coming out, you will not just come out a graduate. What would take your colleagues 10 years you have learned? So one giant leap in destiny you will cover up. But for now, endure. Endure endure you don't have suit to wear don't be under pressure to do anything endure is god speaking to us i choose to endure this is how this ministry came to see what god is doing today and to see where he brought us and to see where he's taking us endurance endure the mockery endure the shame never be under pressure to prove yourself at every given point in your life, those who love you outweigh those who hate you. Don't because of the five or six people that hate you, you throw away the honor of millions of people in your life. If 30 people hate Sam, 2 million people love him. Respect their love and don't turn to 10 or 16 people and try to be under the pressure of defending yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At every point in your life, those who are for you are greater than those who are against you. Rise up on your feet.
as a man thinketh, your mental composition endure. You are in that department, it looks like you will die. It will not kill you. You are not the first to graduate from there. Endure hardship. Endure the mockery. You will be misunderstood. You are being nice to brothers. Sometimes you cook for them. They've called you desperate. Endure. Don't worry. A day will come. His honor will come upon your life. Lift your voice and thank the Lord for the word tonight. Pray. The mental composition that makes you victorious. The mental composition. I give you a guarantee with the integrity of God backed up. It will make you exceptional. It will make you notable. Are you praying, Koinonia? Hallelujah. I like you to lift up your voice and say, Lord, I bring my mindset under the Lordship of Christ. That every mentality in me that is making me think in a way that is inconsistent with the patterns of greatness. I take authority over it. Lift your voice and pray. Koinonia, are you praying tonight? I pull down strongholds. I cast down imaginations. Guard your heart with all diligence. It is the key to your prosperity. Your mindset is the key to the increase in the anointing. Is the key to the Holy Spirit doing mighty things in your life. The key to you being a champion. The key to you breaking cultural barriers. The key to you being mighty. I don't care where you are now. I don't care what is wrong now. Endure. Be strong. Be strong. Hold on. Be strong. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. The name of the mindset I want you to have is called the mind of Christ. The resultant effect of this transformation is called the mind of Christ. Then you become an envoy. Then you master life. Then you become a champion. Men honor you as if you charm them. Everywhere you go, you are a magnet. And people are saying, what? I'm giving you the mental requirements of an exceptional life. Please give us Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Mm. Oh Lord, I pray that your people will listen. Permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus the word let there is permit allow it God is saying change I want to make you mighty you came from Kogi state I know there is witchcraft but can you adjust your mind and see a champion that I will make out of you I know you are weak the whole family stays in one room but can you make that shift in your mind let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you, Koinonia. Let this mind be in you. Upgrade your mindset. Don't let culture cheat you. Don't let your past cheat you. Hallelujah. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, I reject inferiority and low self-esteem. You have made me great. I'm not cheap. I'm not a local champion. I stop trying to do things. Pray, pray, pray. I stop trying to do things to prove a point. I stop trying to borrow money to look rich. I stop trying to tell lies to look like I'm making progress. 
I reject a life of falsehood. I move gradually, gradually, level by level. Pray. I reject low self esteem. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. No culture, no CGPA, no financial level, no challenge will ever make me feel bad. Job or lack of job, admission or lack of admission, marriage or lack of marriage, let it never get to you and make you feel inferior. Pray, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I refuse to feel inferior. The favor of the Lord. The favor of the Lord. A champion on my way to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this prayer point, I'd like you to pray it with all your heart. Say, Lord, my mouth has brought too much trouble in my life. It will not continue like this. I set a guard over my mouth. I have gossiped my way to trouble. I have lied my way to trouble. I have, I have joined the heads of people and friends. I've done a lot of things that have destroyed people. Go ahead and pray. I offer my mouth, my tongue, my lips. From today, it becomes an object of blessing. An instrument of lifting. Pray. I add character and a healthy mindset to my anointing. I speak aright. I speak only when I need to. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. Set a watch, oh God, over my lips. May I not destroy my friends with my words. May I not destroy my destiny helpers. May I not drive away my instruments of breakthrough may i not scatter my family with my words may i not destroy ministries may i not destroy my academics may i not destroy my anointing with bad words uncultured words hallelujah hallelujah number three we are going to pray Say, Lord, from today, I have respect and honor for all men. Regardless of who they are, regardless of who their parents are, grant me grace to demonstrate genuine respect and honor for people, those higher than me, my contemporaries, and even those lower than me. Lift your voice and cry to God. I repent of my rude nature. I repent of my pride and arrogance. Lord, I receive grace. May courtesy open doors of access to me. May honor open doors of access to me. Are you praying? Put a guard, oh God, on my lips. I want to be exceptional. I want to be exceptional. I want to shorten the journey to my destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, hold hands around. We are going to pray. Because you will need grace to fulfill this sign. You are going to pray and say, Lord, over what you have called me to do, I will endure over the preparation i'm in the school of the spirit it does not yet appear but i will endure 
Lord, men are mocking me, but I will endure. My finances are mocking me. My lack of marriage, my lack of childbirth is mocking me, but I will endure. Lift your voice and pray. A supply of grace. A supply of grace. I refuse to be under pressure. Pray. Pray. Grace. 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 To continue in the midst of harsh conditions. Grace. To continue in the midst of persecution. Grace. To continue. That ministry must not die. That anointing must not die. That business must not die. That job seeking must not end. I endure to the end. I endure to the end. There's no food now, but I endure. I don't have friends now, but I endure. Hallelujah. Many times after the service, you see people queuing up to see me. And I have some of our children here. They don't join the queue. It's called the privilege and the blessings of relationship. Hallelujah. While the rest are seeing me officially, some of these children can just walk up to me and hug me. And as far as they are concerned, anybody in the queue, sorry about that, but this is relationship. Are we together now? Oh, relationship will give you more. Points you didn't pray for, you will see God answering it. That's the realm where the Bible says, as they are still thinking, while he's still in the realm of imagination. When they threw a man who was in a healthy relationship with God. You know, that's what, that was the bill that was passed by the Senate in Babylon. To make sure Daniel cuts away his relationship with God. And Daniel said, no, I can do any other thing but not this. When they threw him in the den, the king could not sleep. See, the same way if you touch a man's wife, even if it's by mistake, you can insult her from a distance, that's all right. But you get physical. The husband changes. The Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. You want to see a, an angry man do something to his wife or somebody he loves. His sister or somebody. That's what happens. Love alone will give you a level of immunity. Above the immunity of an earthly ambassador. Believe me when I tell you this. The prophet knew this and that was why when they came to capture him, he said, they that are with us, for us, are greater. There is an immunity that you can have. I pray that God will bring us to that place of fellowship. There is that place where sickness cannot come near you. There is that place where no oppression of darkness. Please believe me. You will not spend your time binding and casting. You will spend your time interacting. There is an immunity that comes from that place. And your life becomes an unending wonder. A subject of discussion with no end. Because there is a mystery that surrounds it. The mystery is him. The mystery is him. When, when Shade was collecting the tithes and offering. And she said, um, she was giving an example of a woman and she wanted to look for somebody i was hoping she won't call my name you clean my feet you don't get anything believe me there's there's, there's nothing on my you only clean a dirty um feet but if you can clean his feet change your life relationship hallelujah number two please pay attention the second thing the lord put in my heart to share with us 
is that life is a code. Life is a code. Life is a code. C-O-D-E. Thank you. Life is a code. There was so much noise. I don't know where that was coming from. Life is a code. And it takes revelation to unlock the codes and the mysteries of life. Brothers and sisters, as haphazard as life looks, there is a spiritual rhythm that is responsible for manifestation of results. Please hear me. I call them mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. Life is a code. It takes knowledge and understanding to unravel it. Nothing just happens. You don't just grow. You don't just experience favor. You don't just prosper. You don't just fall sick. You don't just stay healthy. You don't just live long. And you don't just die. Life is governed by laws. Please listen. Life is governed by mysteries. Bishop Oyedeko calls them kingdom secrets. The Bible says, let, let's look at a few scriptures. While I was meditating on this, I'm telling you, it, it blew my mind. Media, you help us. Give us Job 29, verse 4. Job 29, verse 4. Then we'll go to chapter 1, verse 3. Job 29, verse 4. And then chapter 1 verse 3. Hear what Job said. The richest man in the east. He says, as I was in the days of my youth. When what? When the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle. He was giving us the explanation. This was a defense. A justification for his being the greatest man in influence. And he said, let me tell you. It's not because my name is Job. There was a mystery. He said, I started doing business with God right from my youth. He says, when the secrets of God, everybody say the secrets of God. The secrets of God were upon my tabernacle. What did that produce in his life? Chapter 1 verse 3. Same Job. The Bible says his substance this was a man who had access to divine secrets. The mysteries of the kingdom. Listen, he says his substance was also 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. He says so that this man was what? The greatest of all men in the east. And he tells us the secret. He said, don't just envy my influence. What you see, life is a mirror. If you try to change your physical environment, it's as foolish as looking at the mirror and trying to choke your hand through it to alter it. Life only reflects something happening in the spirit. The greatest man in the east gives us the secret. And he says, the secret of the Lord. I traded secrets, divine secrets. There was an exchange between the Holy Spirit and me. Daniel chapter 2. Let's see what Daniel says. Daniel chapter 2 verse 19 and then 46. Daniel chapter 2 verse 19. Is God blessing you already? Life is not haphazard. Daniel chapter 2 verse 19. Listen, this was when the king had a dream. And he was angry because all his wise men and lieutenants could not interpret it. And he said, look, we're going to kill everybody. And then Daniel said, no, let the king not be hasty in this. Give us time. And Daniel knew the power of his secret place. And the Bible says, then, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. then the secret was what? Revealed. Brothers and sisters, when a particular kingdom secret is revealed, you hold the keys and you will do wonders with it. There's no, there's, there's no way 
No way you can claim you are holding on to a key in the kingdom. And with time, there is no evidence now. It says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. And then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. 46. 46. He says, listen, my goodness, a man holds a secret of the kingdom and begins to shock the entire Babylonian empire to a point that this happened. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar did what? He fell upon his face and worshipped who? God? Secrets make a man like a god upon the earth. A king removes his crown and says, what is this? Daniel. He says he worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer oblation and sweet orders to him. Look at verse 28 of the same verse. 28. Hear what Daniel said. Please let's read together. He was now giving us the key. One to read. But there is a God in heaven that does what? And makes known to the king what shall be in the latter days. Brothers and sisters, the God we serve is a God that reveals secrets. He can call you and say, come, let me show you a secret. Secret. Do you know them? Do you know the mystery? What you see in this ministry by the grace of God, this little that God is doing is a product of mysteries. Don't you ever think it's a mistake. It can be reproduced anywhere, any day, anytime. Because it's a secret. It says there is a God in heaven. Everybody say there is a God in heaven that will reveal secrets for me today. There is a secret when you handle the story of your family will change tonight. Just one secret. Please believe me. There is a secret God can show you by prophecy tonight. And tell you, look, look, this confusion, you are, you are amiss. This is what is wrong. This is the correction. There is a secret. That delay has a mystery that sustains it. Are we together? That bad luck has a mystery that sustains it. Don't just say people don't like me. Don't you know there is something that makes them not to like you? The same way somebody can turn and look at Benga and say, Benga, God just led me. I don't know why, but take 100,000. No, nobody just acts anyhow. They think they are acting out of compassion, but there is an influence in the spirit. <laughs> there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets. Psalm 25 verse 14. Psalm 25 verse 14. I must burn this revelation in our hearts. I want us to really have it. Psalm 25 verse 14. It says the secret of the Lord is with who? Them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. The secret of the Lord is not with believers. It's not with churchgoers. Not pastors. Not apostles, not prophets. Those who revere him. Those who respect him. He will call you and say, come, let me show you something. Let me show you what makes ministry work. Let me show you something that can take your life. Let me show you something that can bring you promotion in your office. There is something. The Bible says the labor of the fool wearied every one of them. Because he does not know the road to the city. Not because there is no road. He does not know. And part of the blessings of the apostolic ministry and the prophetic ministry is access to the mysteries of a dispensation. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Give us chapter, verse 1 to 3. Ephesians chapter 3. This is an apostolic ministry. This is a prophetic ministry. You must understand the spiritual implication this is what paul is saying listen he says for this cause do you know 
that the mysteries of the kingdom have not um it's not yet it's not exhausted the revelation what we know in church today is not all there is god is still opening more doors and it takes the apostolic ministry to be able to receive and communicate these dispensational secrets current mysteries three verse one for this cause i paul the prisoner of jesus christ for you gentiles verse two if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of god which is given me to you word verse three read please one to read how that by revelation he made known unto me what the mystery he made known unto me he showed me by revelation as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby listen when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ next verse shocking listen which in other ages ah, yeah, 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 was not made known to the sons of men stop listen there are mysteries that have been uncovered in in today's world that have not yet been people did not access it before not that it was not there but that mystery was not meant for that dispensation and the bible says which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto who his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit it didn't say reveal to believers please listen this is not human worship it didn't say reveal to believers the current present truth the operation of the holy spirit administratively is communicated in the body by the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic so there are mysteries that god is helping us one of the things i pray that will come upon us tonight is a mantle of revelation not just miracles but that you hold on to something the moment you enter your office you know what to do to silence wicked men the moment you step in you know what to do to move to the next dimension the bible says for jesus himself knew what to do scripture says it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom can we pray in one minute and say lord there is something i need to know to rise to the next level please show me pray There is something I need to know. My God, I pray that you show me. Why does everybody hate me? Could it be that there is a mystery that I need to know? The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. Please pray. Lord, why am I just failing, failing in class? the mystery that will end my captivity why an endless circle of poverty there is a key hand it to me tonight oh god please hand it to me why do i just fall sick what's my church not growing what's my home dividing there is a mystery i humble myself tonight why is the anointing scarce in my life why have i not access influence in the spirit show me the mystery are you praying open my eyes This is my year of multiplied grace and influence. It's my year. I place a demand. It's a right properly. Become truth. Right properly. 
wisely just set up in the depth of my youth when the secrets of the lord there are secrets hear me going on now. we do business in this kingdom with secrets there are secrets we remain of the strength of mysteries pray is part of the meeting you're opening up your spirit lord i'm tired of cycles of failure what's my family there is a mystery that really bring deliverance hallelujah listen The Bible says they are life to those who find them. And only those who seek find. They are life to those who find them. And health to their flesh. Number three. The third thing the Lord asked me to share with us tonight. Very powerful. Is found in John chapter 5. Please give us John chapter 5. We'll read verse 1 to 9. The Lord wants to reveal a dimension of himself tonight as the helper. Listen. Listen. The Bible calls God a Beniza. You know what that means? The helper of men. When God comes in to help you in life, you must succeed. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. We're reading down to verse 9. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda. Bethesda having five porches. Right? Verse 3. In this lay a great multitude of... Look at the kind of people there. Successful people don't have any business with that environment. It's an environment that connoted weakness. It says, impotent folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Please pay attention. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And then whosoever, excuse me, whosoever then um, first, then first after troubling the water stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease he had. Can you imagine that kind of frustration? One person per year. Just like Nigeria says you should wait until somebody retires or dies. Then they say there's vacancy. You now come. One person per year was a horrifying situation. Then the Bible says there was a certain man, no name. There was a certain man. Which had an infirmity for how long? 38 years. After 38 years, anything you cannot do is a concern. Do you agree with me? After 38 years, anything you cannot do is a concern. At 38 years, no child is a concern. At 38 years, you cannot at least move into your house. It's a concern. At 38 years, there's nothing meaningful you are doing. It's a concern. The Bible says this man had been there 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie, now listen, God is about to speak to you. And knew that he had been there for how long? For a... The first revelation is that he knows you have been in that situation for a long time. He knows. And then the Bible says, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? Verse 7. This is what many of us are saying tonight. The important man answered, Sir, I have no man. I have no helper. I would 
have gotten the job but I have no helper I would have stepped into another level in ministry but I have no helper he says I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool and tonight God wants to be a helper he walked to him and the man said I have no helper but he said I will help you you don't need the pool rise up he can use another route the formula had always been fall inside the water but he said let's ignore the water I am here rise up the formula has been be blessed after 20 years but God is saying I can follow another route with you such that in one year I can do something in your life that will surprise you he said I have no man and the Lord said reveal to my people I will manifest as a helper when God helps a man, you will be surprised. The Bible says, Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped. Marvelously helped. Part of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is as a helper. He comes in to help you. That's what grace is all about. That where your effort stops, and you say, Lord, if it's based on my qualification." Oh, I read whatever it is. And God says, I am here. I can take you to another level. Oh God, I'm here. I've been barren. They said, I don't even have a womb. And he says, I am here to help you. Who is God speaking to tonight? You really need help. Only an arrogant person will deny the need for help. I have been helped by people in my life. And I saw how easy my life became when they helped me. Are we together now? Watch this. Benga, come. I'm trying to lift this. And my hand is, I can't lift it. And then a helper comes. And sometimes he can even volunteer to carry everything. And it makes my life easy. The help of God can make a man's life easy. Please, let me preach to you for one minute. I have a responsibility over this house to tell you this and I must say it. Disabuse your mind from this satanic proposal coming from the media that Nigeria is in trouble. Economy, everybody shouting dollar. I'd like you to shout it, count me out. Say it. Shout it one more time. Listen, we are not irresponsible citizens. Don't get me wrong. We sympathize with what is happening in the nation. But if you dare let Satan speak to you, he will destabilize your creativity and crumble your life. People who have been irresponsible since before dollar have found a shield to explain their irresponsibility. Everybody says dollar is rising. Is it not in your Bible when men say, Are we together now? He says, you will say there is a lifting up. This is not the first time the economy of the world is going into trouble. The Bible says in the days of Joseph, it said money failed. Money failed. But there was a secret that was revealed to Joseph. There is what you hold on to that this year can be the most prosperous year in your life. Listen. God is looking for every opportunity to make a statement. Afford him your life. A Christian is not one who has just received Jesus into his life. A Christian, listen, is one who operates by the principles of the word of God. Our economy is different. And by economy, I don't just mean finances, your health, whatever. There's Lassa fever. There's what again? Huh? There's Zika virus. There's which one again? They are, they are there. It's the one you know you are mentioning. What of the ones that are arrows that fly by day? Have they told you on TV? The Bible. Listen, listen. Psalm 90. Don't turn there. Our time is gone. Psalm 91 said, Thou shalt not be afraid. Of the arrows that fly by day. 
the noisome pestilence right there are diseases you breathe them all around it takes a superior revelation to keep you i reject everything whose price has been paid on the cross i will not pay another price again are we together you must understand the implication of your oneness with christ so he wants to be your helper can you hand over your life and say god help me truly i've tried by myself if you don't help me i will never get this admission if you don't help me i will never graduate if you don't help me my certificate will remain a piece of paper i will keep mocking myself with my accolades listen if no one has told you let me tell you again our world is a cruel and a wicked world you don't have to do anything you don't have to trouble anyone you just need to be alive that's the condition to be a potential victim When the Lord told me this, I said, Lord, I first, I receive for myself. I receive for myself. He is my helper. When God comes in to help you, he can round off what has taken you 10 years, 10 years of captivity. Let me tell you something. It doesn't take time when Jesus is there. It doesn't take time. You will be watching the growth. This is how it will live. And you are saying, where is it? It's gone. Who is like him, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? What is father and the ocean road to the Lord of Do you know why I raised that song? If you think there are many gods, I know that we claim we are not idols, but I will show you now that many of us have been practicing idolatry. You know why many people never believe God? We still have options. Your uncle still said, okay, let's just see what happens at the end of the month. So while you are saying, Lord, I trust you, what you mean is, Lord, I trust you through my uncle. Are we together now? Lord, I trust you through that that ceo i met him and he said uh, he will consider my promotion lord i trust you through my job god says he will bless you and he said i know my salary is on his way coming <sighs> lord i trust you and you say i know i there's there's that consultant surgeon he's coming in next week from india and god is just arranging it such that is coinciding with my need who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down, every ocean rose to the Lord of Lords. Praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day. Praise Adonai, all the nations of the earth, all the elders and the saints, sing praise. I believe God, oh, I'm a man of faith. I believe God. He says, I know whom I have believed. I've seen God help people even in this place. In this place, brothers and sisters, there is a mystery of lifting. God can take a man. You see somebody today and God can lift that person. It, it, they looked at Saul and said, when did, we can't see the process. When did Saul become a prophet? A man sleeps as a prisoner. But the next afternoon, he's already a prime minister. Oh, don't play with the God we serve. There is a mystery of the lifting of men that you are about to die after one month and after koinonia you are not only alive you are carrying the healing anointing who is this god that can bring speed to a man 
I'm not motivating you. I know him. There is a mighty God who can wipe the tears of people. Let me tell you, this night, before we pray, just take away your mind from anything and everybody. Don't come to God with your calculation and say, Lord, my prayer request, I wrote my uncle, he must answer me. Leave that one. Let God choose if God wants to use a chair to give you a breakthrough. Let him give it to you. You've not read that God used a bed to bring bread for a man. Do you think if Elijah had an option, he would choose a bed? Was it not rock that brought water out from people? These things were not done in the spirit. It's just that we truly do not believe God. We think we do, but we don't. There are people who are sick here right now, but may never believe that God can touch them. Listen, don't be so into your challenges that you think tonight God cannot touch you. It's easy to say, okay, God, I'm happy. I, I thank you for what you are doing. No, you must insist. Hallelujah. Luke 18 verse 1, the Bible says, He spake this parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He said there was an unjust judge. He didn't fear anybody, not God, nor man. And there was this poor widow who said, Avenge me, my adversary. And for a long time, the man would not respond. And she kept pestering him. When you place a demand with your faith, there is enough grace. There is enough anointing. You can argue this and watch other people stepping into their testimonies. But please tonight, wherever you are, inside and outside, don't make it look like you have come to waste your time tonight. Are we together? God has revealed to us that he's coming in as a helper. Bless you, my dear. As a helper. As a helper, this ministry has been helped by the Lord. Greatly helped by the Lord. I think it was last week I was sharing the testimony. We don't have the opportunity to share one tenth. And by the way, I want to challenge you. When God blesses you, don't keep quiet. You return back to where you receive the miracle and let the people of God know that this is what God has done. I shared the testimony last week. I think it was last week or two weeks ago. When Kaduna, after a meeting, just to have lunch briefly and then rush back. And I'm there and then a woman walks up to order a meal too and she's with a little son. Then I look at this woman and she was looking at me. She said, are you Pastor Joshua? I said, yes, ma. And then she greeted me. And I said, sorry, do I know you? And she smiled. She said, I'll tell you a little story. She said, two years ago, she came for counseling as wretched it was like she had come to the end of her life. I share this to encourage you. Hallelujah. And um, she said everything was scattering. She was a single mom with a child. Supposedly no hope for marriage. Nothing was working. They were about to throw her out on her job. And I prophesied to her and I said they were going to call her back and send her to the marketing department she should not be afraid and she said man of god that's exactly what happened and she looked at me and she said can you imagine what has happened in my life she just put her hand like this and i saw a ring and she said i just got married two months ago and then she said i should look outside and there was a clean e-class she said who would believe that in two years i'll be the one owning this my life has changed brothers and sisters if you will believe god can change your life if you will argue, he will not argue with you. He will leave you to continue until you find enough reasons. Please, I want you to be angry today as we pray and place a demand on the throne of heaven and say, Lord, you must answer me. Whenever I call you, you will answer me. Elijah called on you and you answered him. Moses called on you and you answered him. That's why I know wherever I call you, you will answer me. Seated here, inside and outside, in all of the overflows, there are people with medical reports that if God does not visit them this night, they are dying for sure. 
I bring you a message of hope. The helper is in the house. There are families here who are in situations that will take a vigil for them to explain because the, the situation is so scattered it doesn't have beginning and end. They don't even know where the problem started from. They know that they are in the middle of a situation. But the helper when he comes, he can make every crooked path straight. There are people here trusting God for children. There are people here trusting God for a turnaround, breakthrough. Do you believe that God is stepping in? The worship team sang so beautiful and they challenged us. Do you believe that God is able to step in? We are going to pray right now. You are not praying for your neighbor. You are not praying on your request. You are going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, please, don't let me go back the same way I came. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside, please pray. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 One more prayer point. The power of God is so strong in this place. I'd like you to say, Lord, visit the foundation of my problem and set me free. Please, lift your voice and pray. What you think may be the problem may not really be the problem. Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song just seven times. And then I'll begin to minister. My goodness. I tell you, God will do extraordinary things in this place. I will praise him from everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting no, 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 no. to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to the voices. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Praise the miracle walker from who will step into your life. Everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. One more time. Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. Madam, let me talk to you, please. Yes. 
We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. It's time for you to rejoice. The Lord is asking me to destroy witchcraft from your life and your family. Because you love the Lord, but there is a lot of oppression in your life. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that he's ending captivity today from your life. Right now, I command that spirit out by the power of the Holy Spirit. I stretch my hand. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing something being removed from your head. That's what I see happening. You will never be the same again. I command it out by the authority of the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ and God is removing something from your stomach too I'm seeing something leaving your stomach like a growth I command it to go now right now right now I will praise him from everlasting everlasting to Hallelujah. everlasting madam check yourself Give her the mic. Check yourself right now. Your stomach area. Check yourself. What is happening? Look at this. Because I saw that there was something. If I don't pray for you, huh? There's a movement. Movement. Because I'm seeing something. Later they will tell you it's fibroid. Huh? You are you are even afraid of going to the hospital. The hospital. Yes. Because you think they will tell you it's fibroid. That's really what they would have told you. But today we cancel it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everlasting to everlasting. Gabriel. I'm hearing the name Gabriel. 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 Please let's save time. Gabriel. You are at that row. You are at the back. That row. At the back. You are a gentleman. At the back. That row there. Where is the person? Please. Come out quickly. You are wearing something like brown. Brown shirt or something. Is there someone like that? Who is that? Come. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Eh? because I'm seeing another woman your mother is here the Lord is saying I should speak to her light is living from you outside there is a woman outside she's your mother where is she is she here or at, not outside at, at the, is he at the edge of the wall or outside some who is that please is she here come mama God is wiping the tears of your family tonight Everlasting to everlasting, Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting. Mama, you're welcome. Please stand up. This woman has suffered. I'm looking at this woman and I saw a load on your head that is reaching the roof and she's carrying it alone. Mama, can you hear me? Look at this woman crying. You see, some of you don't know why God, this is not just showmanship. There are people here just seated close to you if they tell you their stories, your own story will look like child's play because this woman has suffered. Mama, you are a good woman, but listen, listen. Where, where are, you? are you? Are you in Zaria here? Yes, sir. In Zaria, what do you do? I deserve something. I need to pray because I'm, I'm seeing this is a cause. I'm a widow. I know. I'm going to pray for you. Do you know why I call this boy? They want to kill him. 
That's why I want to pray for him. They cut. He must have they cut. This way, must have they cut. Yes. I go yesterday. Yesterday we go. They say on the ten. We come back again. Eh? What cut? He get problem. He must have they cut. If I don't pray for this boy as small as he is, they are going to kill him. Do I know you are, have a case in the court? Why would we call somebody? Like, don't, don't be afraid, mama, because this thing will even cause you problem. Um, young man, I will pray for you. Mommy, look at me. This thing is a curse. Huh? The same way they killed your husband, they want to kill this boy and leave you in misery. Huh? Mama, I'm going to pray for you. There is a God that reveals secrets to men. Yeah. Because I'm seeing a load right to the roof on your head. You are carrying it alone. I will pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is wiping your tears. I'm seeing a mother outside. The Lord is showing me a mother outside. A woman outside. Uh, it's like you are wearing her tie. But it's not like a tie, same material. A tie like a normal, this thing. This, this, it's, a, it's an elderly woman outside sitting just by this side of the window. Please, I need to speak to her. If there is somebody like that, let's have a mother outside. The Lord is showing me. Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus for God to change your story. I don't know what is in the court, but in the name of Jesus, we will change it. How old are you? You are 14. You will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus. You believe that? Where are you from, Mama? I'm from Edo. You are from where? Old Edo, from Okwela. Where are you from? You are from Edo State. That's what the Lord is telling me. Because the same thing he's delivering two of you from. You see that? Mama, I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is destroying that spirit. Father, I lay my hands on our mommy. The back pain. Look at me, mama. The back pain you it did, it did, it did. You will be healed now. Amen. Hold my hand. Amen. Look at what is happening to her. Mama, shout Jesus loud. Jesus. Father, hold my hands for your glory. Mama, look at me. Look at me. You see something like fire moving at your back right now. That pain is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Do what you couldn't do. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Look at. Look at you. Help her. Cover her. It will never return to you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you, my friend. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing two heads. This is a misidentity. The devil wants to misrepresent you, but I'll pray for you. Huh? Your passion for God. Have good friends. If your friends are not good, leave them this night. May God give you good friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you. That anointing comes upon you, takes you to a new dimension. This is the woman, Mama, you are welcome. Let's celebrate Jesus. I'll pray for you, but there is another woman I'm talking about. There is another Mama outside who needs to come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. You have a daughter. Yes. Where is she? She's outside. She's outside. Call her. Come. Daughter, where are you? Please come. Everlasting Shim. To What's her name? Shim. Shim. Please, Shim. you had your name rush and come in. Our time is gone. Who is this? I told her to have the one. No. The woman I'm talking about has her tie. Um, it's not the same as the material. It's not the same as the material she's wearing. I'm looking for a hair tie that looks close to it. Ladies, now, the normal scarf that you carry and tie. But I will pray for you. 
anybody that has come out, I'll pray for you. I don't know why she's here, but I'll pray for you. You are already out, I'll pray for you. Please, let's, let me just minister to those that are here. I'll pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Please, you can return back to your seat. Let me talk to you. Your daughter? Mama, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is visiting your family in the name of Jesus Christ. He's visiting your family. And look at me, my dear. God is taking delay from your family. Tell your mother. This is your grandmother, right? Huh? Who is like your mother? She is oh, mine. I see. I, I, oh, I get the story now. Your real mother is dead. This is your grandmother, but she's like your mother now. Yes. Oh, I see. Because the Lord is saying, I should tell your mother, whoever is that, that she's going to lift her. Amen. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Mama, God is lifting you and is wiping your tears. And the Lord is telling me that he's adding years to your life. Believe me. Who is this? Your what? Sister, but she have um, son and daughter. You have a daughter? She have a daughter, but she's my elder sister. She's your elder sister? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll talk with you. We have to really rush. Mama, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. The God I serve will bless you. He will honor you. What do you do, my dear? I'm a student. Where? ABU here. ABU here. Yes, I'll pray for you. God is bringing favor upon your life. Look at me. You will really be a blessing to mama and make sure you bless her with all your heart in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you right now in the name of jesus bless you mama come come two of you you love jesus are you part of them come you love jesus no you are stubborn come you need to be prayed for come you don't love jesus you are you are very stubborn but Jesus loves you. You are a stubborn boy. You have bad friends. You don't listen. We have to pray for you. There is a spirit disturbing you. You need to be delivered. Let her go right now. Out! Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. I command that devil. Hmm? They want to make your sister mad. Eh? What's wrong with her? It's mad, sir. She's mad. Yes, sir. This is madness. She will be free right now. She came here mad. You are joking. This is koinonia. I command that spirit. She's mad. Out. You must go right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release her hands. Release her hands. Hold me. Hold me. I command that madness. How can a lady like this be mad for God's sake? I command that spirit, they must leave you right now. In the name of Jesus, I set you free by the spirit of the Christ. Jesus, for your mercy, for your glory. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. This lady is not just mad. This was supposed to be an initiation. Hold on, please. This is a serious issue. This is supposed to be an initiation into the occult. This is not just mad, like occult, fly. This is occult. An occultic thing. It's not just madness. And you, if they don't pray, you don't listen, you are small, but God will help you, eh? Don't be angry. You have to leave your bad friends. You hear me? If not soon now, you start taking a, what's that thing? That cough syrup. Huh? You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Please. Don't be embarrassed. We're not, we're not here to embarrass people. You get what I'm saying? We're not here to embarrass people. I have to pray for you. What do you do? Um, I'm, I'm back in, in Sokoto. Huh? I'm staying with my elbow at the Sokoto. No, that's not what you are doing. Hold on. Why am I seeing a clipper? I'm piping in Sokoto. You say you are staying with your brother. I'm seeing a clipper. Come. 
you two, two of you, God needs to help you. You are a good boy, but there, there's bad influence around your life. God even needs to visit your brother in Sokoto. Eh? You believe what I'm telling you? Yes, you came from Sokoto? Yes, sir. All the way? Yes, sir. This one, where did he come from? He's staying with my mom here. Yeah. He's staying with your mom. Is your mom here? No, sir. She's not here. I have to pray for you. Huh? Um, when, I'm, when I make the altar call, I'll make the altar call. Once you just hear the altar call, just run and come out. Hmm? It's time to be very serious. Jesus Christ will help you. You're a great person. Huh? You are a great person. You don't have any business doing what you are doing. Now, what took you to Sokoto? I went to school. Are you a student? Yes, I have not gotten to admission yet. Your school is not Sokoto. Come back. Don't think somebody will manipulate you and do wrongs for you to get this and that because what you want to do is not very good. Eh? It's not a godly thing you want to do to get admission. Let's do things correctly. Huh? What do you want to study? Computer science. This is not computer science. I'm seeing IT. Something that has to do with, with IT. And God will bless you, but you need to settle down. Because the way you are desperate for admission now, you can you do everything. Have you written jam? Um, you are writing jam on Tuesday. Huh? Tuesday. Well, I won't say it here. Be careful. Just be careful. You hear what I'm saying, Abi? You know what I'm saying. Yes, be careful. Eh? Because you can't want God to help you. And you're already doing arranging. You know what I'm saying now? All these funny things people do for jam. What is not your own is not your own. I'm not embarrassing you. The Lord will step in and the Lord will bless you. Just hold that lady and let me minister to you. Who is this? Please, if I don't... Yes, Mama, Mama, come. Please, if I don't call you, you don't come out. Mama, I want to pray for you. You do business. Because you are supposed to do... There is business that God has been putting in your heart. Huh? Is that true? God, I see you do business. What you are getting from civil service is not enough to take care of you. And God wants to open a door for you. A business door. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to pray for you because God wants to really give you prosperity this year. Okay, thank you. Regina, Regina. I hear a name Regina. Regina, Lord, in the name of Jesus, step into our mother's life. Do a miracle for her right now in the name of Jesus. I hear a name, Regina. Regina. Please, who is that? Do we have anybody? Outside. Regina. You are outside. There's nobody. We just move to the next case. You are Regina. Come, what do you do? I'm a saloonist. You are a saloonist. I need to pray. Bad luck. God wants to take away bad luck from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's marriage was cancelled. Come out, please. Your marriage. Who is that? No, not you. Somebody's marriage. I'll pray for you. Don't worry. You were supposed to. You've even started the arrangement. They just cancelled it like this. And your heart is pain. Please come out. I want to pray for you. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit is giving us grace. You are Regina. In the name of Jesus, God is giving you favor. Please don't sit back. This is a serious issue. In the name of Jesus, I lay hands on you. Please go back. I don't have to speak over your life. Once I lay hands on you, what do you do? I just graduated. Eh? Graduated from school. You just graduated. I have to pray for you because you love God. Yes, sir. Mind is who is supposed to they've started your marriage planning. Please come, my sister. I, I don't mean to embarrass you. You get what I'm saying? Is to speak over your life. You two, what category are you here for? Huh? Regina, okay, I'll pray for you. Who has sickle cell? S There's a sickler here now. You are the one. Please indicate, eh, sweetheart. Come. Hold my hands. Look at me. Father, please do a miracle for this lady. You have changed several genotypes in this place. Change her genotype right now. In the name of Jesus. From SS to AA. 
do it for her in the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me please. Um, are you based in Zaria here? Are you part of our prayer department? Yes, sir. Please be serious, eh? And pray because uh, it's not just prayer department. After Koinonia, you can meet the media and listen to the messages. They will help you. You love Jesus, but your mindset is still very serious. And you can do anything, especially men. So please, you will listen to that message and the Lord will help you. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, come. I don't know what happened. I don't want to ask you. Please don't feel embarrassed. Huh? When do you want to settle down? It was supposed to be December last year. It was supposed to be December last year. What happened? He called me and said I should forget about everything. The guy called you and just told you he's not doing again. Yes, sir. Did he give you a reason why? No reason. Okay, let me tell you. Weep not. God save you from heartache. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please. See, let me tell you. If you don't have the eyes of the spirit, you will be fighting God not knowing. Are we together now? I'm sorry to say, don't feel bad. Don't feel embarrassed. You see that guy? It was three of you. You are not the only one. You have been sensing that there's another lady. The other lady promised to do him something if he doesn't leave you. That's why he, he quietly called out of fear and all of that. that he's, he may be a sincere person, but him and women, he's even a spirit. He needs help. Let me pray for you that God will bring the man he has destined. You're a very nice lady. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon her. Father, send him to her life, the man, a, a responsible and God-fearing man. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for your shame, may my God give you double. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let me just talk to two people and then we'll... Madam, please come. That woman, can I talk to you? Please clear the way for her. Madam, please come. Please, let's pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray in the spirit. Say, Father, visit me. Madam, please look at me. I have to pray for you. Something is tying your finances down completely. Yes, sir. That's the major reason why you came. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. You were asking the Lord to visit your finances. Yes, sir. Because everybody will see you now and think things are just working, but the truth is nothing is really working. Yes, sir. You need a serious miracle in that area. That's true, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. Are you married? Yes, but now I'm out of Hold on. Don't worry. You just answer. You don't have to embarrass yourself because there is a spirit. Huh? This spirit brings bad luck on your life. People come to you and then in a few weeks or months, they will now fight you. This is still what happened in your marriage. It's true, sir. Because the man has gone. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, is that true? Are you in your husband's house now? No, sir. You are not in your husband's house. The yes, Lord is bringing a miracle for you. Amen. What do you do? I'm a hairdresser. You are? Hairdresser. Do you believe in tithing? Yes, sir. You tithe? No. Don't feel embarrassed. This is the one thing the devourer is marching in and out of your life because tithing is not in place. Please believe it. It's not a gimmick by men of God. Is she your friend? Because I'm seeing light from you to her. You know her. Eh? Why have you not been talking to her about tithing? Even last week you discussed with her. No, 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 don't feel bad. Madam, please. Look at me. Tithing is not a gimmick by men of God. Believe me. You understand what I'm saying? It's the access point the devil is using. Where is your husband, the man now? He's at home now. Has he married another one? You want to get married? You want to get married? Are you sure? I will discuss with you, eh, madam. This is not something we will say in public. It's a very serious issue. But I need to pray for you. But for now, I need to pray for you. There is bad luck. And we need to pray against it. Please don't feel bad. God is about to change your life. Please hold my hands. 
in the name of Jesus. I command that spirit. See, there is a spirit that is making this thing happen. In the name of Jesus Christ, let her go. Release her right now. That spirit leaves you. Madam, go and prosper. You will prosper in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Um, there's a baby that is sick. I have to pray for that baby. I'm seeing a baby that is very sick. Very small baby. Sick. Your child? Is she sick? Yes, sir. What's wrong with her? She's having difficulties in breathing. Difficult in breathing. Difficulty in breathing. How old is the baby? It's five months. Five months. This is not the only baby. There's another one. Come, come. I'll pray with you. What did the doctors tell you about the baby? Syndrome. They said it's what? That is Down syndrome patient. Down syndrome? Yes, sir. We soon need doctor. Ah, you are a doctor now. Down syndrome. At least I know. I don't know what causes it, but I know how it. Do Please come, come, come and talk to us. Give us some little education. Let's cast this. Um, it's a congenital disorder, and the difficulty in breathing is most likely coming from a congenital heart disease. It mostly manifests with congenital heart disease. Then there are other um, manifestations too. From the fishy, you can um, see some of the manifestations also. I don't know what you said, but all <laughs> I know. <laughs> Most likely, the difficulty in breathing is coming from a congenital heart disease. We are going to pray. This, this baby... believe that this child ah god do a miracle in the name of jesus hold him am i holding him right jesus christ father by the blood of jesus do a miracle in this child we change this situation in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit let there be a miracle in jesus name I'm seeing one more child though. Who is that? Please come. Please hold the child. You are the one who needs the healing first. Just hold the child. I hope the child will not cry. I have to pray for you. Huh? Something is really fighting you. Huh? This is witchcraft. Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, you know my voice. In the name of Jesus, she's been translated from the kingdom of darkness into light. And you must let her go. I'm seeing this lady in the realm of the spirit like a tree. That is, is refused from moving. Hold my hands. You must be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those dreams, those oppressions, I come against them in Jesus' name. Let's pray for the baby. What's wrong with the baby? She has been coughing and stooling. Coughing and stooling. Baby, how are you? In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak to you. No more coughing. In the name of Jesus Christ, perfection in your body. I release the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, the power flows through this baby. Jesus name. I hope the usher will help her because I'm sensing this anointing even on her. In the name of Jesus Christ. Baby we take away everything that is not of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Where is the man in your life? Okay. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing something that is serious but I'll talk, I'll talk about it. Okay. The Lord is showing me something that is quite serious. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands.
there are 13 people here there is a strong influence of confusion and stagnation please listen 13 people here right now inside and outside i'm going to pray for you right now wherever you are as i begin to pray it's like fire it will come upon you confusion stagnation at least 13 people i see in the spirit please lift your hands don't say anything just lift your hands i'll do the praying let's just flow the way the holy spirit is praying. lord jesus i'm praying right now by the ministry of angels 13 people by the influence of the spirit i stand under this apostolic anointing and i pray right now wherever you are inside and outside right now as i pray that fire starts coming upon them right now right now bring them out 13 people 13 people by the power of the holy spirit i end it right now there are still people outside inside 13 people by the anointing of the holy spirit bring them out please right to the back right to the back right to the back right to the back i'm seeing fire it's like a spirit that would jump out of you right to the back inside outside i command that confusion outside the anointing the holy ghost is resting on people confusion all the overflows in the name of jesus confusion must come to an end right now delay lift your hands i tell you there will be a mighty baptism outside outside at the count of three i want you to shout jesus when you shout it i see altars on fire are you ready now outside one two three bring them bring them fire is falling outside the bible says why men slept hear me there are things that tie the destinies of men jesus already paid the price that's why we are doing what we are doing the authority is that of jesus christ bring them in now listen listen my goodness you are going to lift your hands for your family i see the angels of the lord bringing deliverance for families listen at the count of three i tell you wherever you are i like you to shout jesus with all your heart some of you you are representing an altar of god for your family and the moment you do that in the name of jesus there will be a miracle one father for families let the soul of the spirit go from the north to the south east and the west of every family right now at the count of three one two three Jesus! families 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 the sword of judgment Pray, pray. Make sure you're praying. In the name of Jesus. Break it, 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 break it,
Aleluya. 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 Now those outside, listen. I came out because your destiny must open up. Lift your hands. I came out to bring the atmosphere of God's presence. Hear me. There is no one here whose destiny has been tied that that spirit will remain. I'm going to, listen. I'm going to begin to walk around. My goodness. I see angels by my left and right. As I begin to move across this place, the fire of God will start falling. Right now, I stand under this apostolic office and I declare my hands. Right now, right now, right now. I command that right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire. 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 Every spirit. Every devil. From my left. My right, outside, outside, my left, my right, every devil, right now, I stretch my hands, every spirit, go, 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 I command every spirit, right now, release them, release them, right now, release them, release them, release them. Release them. Hallelujah. 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 Those of you here, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to shout Jesus just two times. And I see like a tornado. It's like the spirit will start moving right to the back. That's what the Lord is saying. I should shout. There are spirits, time men. It's your time to go now. Jesus. Get ready now. Get ready now. Jesus. Go, go, go out, out right now. My left and my right, I release my spirit. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Those spirits, I command them to leave right now. In the name of Jesus, out, 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 out. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I command right now, right now. I stretch my hands towards you. Every force tying you down. In the name of Jesus, it must release you right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Those of you outside don't think you are missing anything at all. That's why I came out. I'm going to all the overflows. Those of us here, you may be outside. But let me tell you something. God will step into your destiny. Please lift your hands. Because I'm seeing chains from where this camera is right to the end. I'm seeing chains. Lift your hands. I want you to shout Jesus just once at the count of three. And everybody under that influence must go right now. Please be careful with anybody close to you so that you don't stampede them. Father, I chains of bondage. But you organize this meeting to recover destinies. Therefore, at the count of three, it will come like fire on some of you. One, two, three. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Let that go right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 The Lord is giving you a new song. A new song. The Lord is wiping your tears. You on green, lift your hands. Take it now. Receive right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Mama, the Lord is saying I should tell you he's wiping your tears. God is wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is saying what you could not do in five years. You mama, in five years. He's making to happen for you in one year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sir, I have to pray. There's delay in your life. The Lord wants me to break the spirit of delay. 
I hope you are not embarrassed, sir. No. Hold my hand, sir. Something will happen to you remarkably right now. Take it. That devil of delay. Out of his life right now. Out. Out. I don't know who this man is, but he's stepping into a new level. God is wiping the spirit of delay. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing in the spirit a name Eboyi. Eboyi State. Someone here from Eboyi State. God is bringing a miracle at my back. That person is at my back. Eboyi State. God is bringing a miracle wherever that person is. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Margaret? Margaret. I'm hearing the name Margaret. You are in this place. Oh, no, 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 no. There's a lady here, Margaret. I'm seeing the Lord is shining. Who is that? Come, Margaret. You are Margaret. Look at me. The Lord is wiping the tears of your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit to leave your family right now. I see a family of five ladies. None is married. A family of five ladies. The Lord is showing me. Five ladies. None is married. None is married. He's on the wheelchair. How long have you been? Seven years. Sir. Seven years. What happened to you? Shot. Shot. You were shot? I'm a military personnel. Oh, you're a military personnel? Yes, sir. And you've had to leave the army because of it? Or you're still there? Still the service, but then you need to walk? Yes, sir. Wow. You can't feel... You can't feel this leg right now. Spinal cord injury. Oh, it's a spinal cord. A lumbar problem. Yes, sir. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family of five ladies. Please. I have to talk. Five ladies. None of them is married. Five ladies. None is married. No one among them is married. God needs to do a miracle. Please make sure that we confirm the situation. Five ladies, so that we don't say yes. we are faking it. Please make sure. Yes, yes. Five ladies, where yes, are you from? Yes, I'm from Edo State. You are from Edo State? Yes, yes. You two? Five, you two? You are together? Oh, you are his sister? No. You are his friend? So why are you here with him? To back him up? Oh, five ladies, yes. Okay, I'm going to pray for you right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. There is a spirit that brings delay in your family. And I take authority over that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. There's somebody around here. You are into book selling. Bookstore business. God wants to increase somebody's bookstore business. Here. I'm sensing it. I don't know if there's anybody here. You are into selling of books. The Lord is saying, prophesy increase to that person. Oh, Jordan is you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Jordan. You step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Ah, but you are not related to him. You just came out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the people here. I hope they can hear me. Hallelujah. There's somebody I need to pray for here. Call that lady. Call that lady. You. Don't think distance is a barrier. Believe me. God can fish you out from anywhere. Look at me. I know you are standing by the fence, but God is wiping your tears. He's giving you a new song. You, right now, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God has answered your prayer. You are praying that I minister to you. You and your friend. Where is your friend? Where is he? Lift up your hands, two of you. You will step into an anointing. Uh, hold your hands together. In the name of Jesus. Look. I stretch my hands. Right now, let a fire come upon both of you. Right now. Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You step into a strange dimension. Let me talk to the people here. I want everybody to be able to know that when you come for this meeting, it doesn't matter where you are. God can visit you. No, don't worry. Just, just leave the person. Grace. I hear a name, Grace. 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 There's someone with the name Grace. 
Is there someone like that? Grace. Grace. I need to pray for grace. 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 And I'm hearing Garba. Garba. I'm hearing a name Garba. God is ministering to somebody. I don't know if it's a son name or a name Garba. In the name of Jesus. Garba, where are you? Your name is Garba. Your son name is Garba. Where is your dad? He's outside. He's in Saudi Arabia. He's, a, he's, he's in Saudi Arabia. Because I'm seeing God is saying, look at me. God is saying I should tell you that there's going to be increase for your family. Okay. And so, I, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You have to be very serious with me. You are going to be very wealthy. You are going into oil and gas. Amen. Are you hearing me? I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. But I'm seeing that you are going into oil and gas. And God is going to honor you. God will bring a man into your life. Bless you. I'm seeing three people here. You are writing jam next week. Jam. No, no, not everybody. Hold on, hold on. Just relax. I'm going to pray for everybody. Here, where I'm standing. You are writing jam. Three people. Right in jump. Somebody is writing it for the fourth time. That person, you are the one. This will be the last time. Do you know me? Come, come and stand. What, please remind me in case I forget. This jump thing, we have to settle it once and for all. Please. People are writing this thing again and again. I curse that spirit. This overflow, these ones looking at me, please lift your hands. Not these ones, those ones, exactly. Please lift your hands. Please don't think that because of the distance, all right, God cannot touch you. There is a reason why I'm coming out with this because sometimes inside is just a fraction of those outside. And I want you to feel a sense of belonging to know that God is able to visit you and to minister to you. Hallelujah. Those outside here there are at least two of you fire is coming upon you right now i see the power of darkness being broken lord where are they right now i stretch hands in the name of jesus christ i stand upon this anointing wherever they are father there is a lady right now it's like fire is coming upon you right now right now right now in the name of jesus christ that fire is coming upon you. All of you standing here, I prophesy to you. In the name that is above all names, hear me. Whatever has tied your progress, I'm talking to those here. I stand under this anointing and I declare a change of story right now. Benway State, there's someone here from Benway. Benway. Benway State. You have an elder brother. Please make sure that you don't come out. We are not faking this thing. Please. You have an elder brother. Where? I'm going to pray for you. God is visiting your family. Visiting your family in strange ways. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that if you seek him with all your heart, he will surprise you. I hear what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a lot of families here under financial stagnation. And the Lord is saying, release them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, listen, listen. Please believe what I'm saying. Don't come and waste your time. God brought you here to wipe your tears. Any family here, you have tried and tried and tried. Doors have refused to open. I open it for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see somebody here. You are looking for a job. June. Um, you are looking for a job in Abuja by June. I see a job coming. This is what God is saying. I don't know who I'm speaking. But God is meaning somebody. Your name is Grace. Where is your mother? Kogi State. I need to pray for you because there is witchcraft. I take authority over that spirit. Name of Jesus. I need to pray for somebody. Two of you. I want you to follow me. You smoke this thing. Uh, what's the name of that? 
is not just stab out. Weed, please don't be embarrassed. Two of you, you really smoke it. You love the Lord, but this thing is a challenge. Please follow me. Your deliverance has come. You smoke weed. Your own is not just uh, all that cigarette. Please don't be embarrassed. Follow me and I'll, I'll pray for you. And brother here, listen. Listen, God is speaking to you. You came for koinonia, but you left a lady in your room. You left a lady in your room. You told her you are coming for koinonia and you will come back. Please, don't destroy yourself and destroy that lady because your going back now is to get that lady pregnant and you'll be in trouble. God is saving you. Send her a text now to go home. You are born again. Once I make altar call, wherever you are, please march to the front in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The power of God is coming on some ladies here. I've seen a, some at least three ladies. Severe menstrual pain. This is not this is something that for one of you is in your family. Lift your hands, please. Just here, this region. Right now, the fire of God is going to come on some ladies. I take authority over that spirit. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. Right now. I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady will feel like fire on her stomach right now. It will come upon you like fire. I take authority over it. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And there is a lady that the Lord is showing me. For four months, you have not seen your period. Four months, you have not seen your period. I think you need to talk to your friend to help you because before the end of this meeting is returning in the name of Jesus Christ I see someone's family um, like relative in prison there's somebody here like that in prison one of your relatives I don't know if it's in a police station or prison something like that God is doing a miracle who is that there's somebody like that you're the one come who is in prison your nephew, are you sure? Oh Which prison? God. Is in Gobe State. How long is his tenure? Uh, five years. You five years. How many years has he done? One. One year. We are going to pray for mercy. You will not reach five years. We are going to bring him out. You believe that? Oh yes. Lift your hands for him. God. And let the name of Jesus step in and give him the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your hands, my dear. Look at me. I'm seeing a crown being put on your head. You, this hearing me god is bringing you into a new dimension of grace father i stretch my hands to her right now right now that fire comes upon you right now in the name of jesus let me talk to the lady with the pink cap you lift your hands beauty for ashes that's what god is saying is bringing beauty for ashes in the name of jesus christ God is bringing a restoration to your family. Your family is experiencing I will praise you. In the name of Jesus. Joseph. Joseph, I hear you. Joseph. Joseph, you are wearing a short dress. Joseph, you are wearing a short dress. Joseph. I will pray for you, but the Joseph is inside the house here. Who is that? Come out. Your name is Joseph. I will pray for you. God wants to lift you. Lift your hands. Something will come on you. You are still there. You are in copper. God is wiping you. In the name of Jesus Christ, a new dimension of grace. You are Joseph. Look at me. What are you studying? Are you a student? You are done with German. What do you want to study? Agri. You are going to be a businessman. And God is going to honor you. In the name of Jesus. Joseph John. Where is he? Come. Why did you stop doing business? There's an anointing for you. Go back and the Lord will honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. Where is your mother? Where is the village? The Lord is saying I should tell you 
the way he would lift you, all those who know you will be surprised. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord would lift you. Eh? Because I'm seeing your story similar to that of Esther in the Bible. Go and read the story of Esther. How that God can pick somebody who is supposedly nothing. Someone's sister here is barren. Who is that person? Barren. The Lord is saying it's time for the child. I will praise you. Not you or your sister. And I will your sister is barren. How many years? Six years. You follow me. How, how many years? Eleven years. Two of you come. The Lord is responding. You too. Please follow me. Madam. Look at me. Confusion is ending in your life. Come. Come. The Lord is bringing an end to confusion in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone, lift your voice and pray and say, Father, you are changing my story. There is a habit God is setting you free from. It's a terrible habit right now. Be free. It's not a habit you should practice at all. God is setting you free from it. Somebody here has eye problems. No, 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 not I, I'm going to for you. There's somebody here with eye problem. Your eye pains you if you see light. Who is that person? I'm going to bring status as changer. No more denying. You get discouraged easily. I'm on my way to Who is the person? Your hands your is in the name of Jesus. And no more Let's go. I'm on my way to Those things, please follow me. No more the Lord is bringing me to a new dimension. I'm on my way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants to release certain kinds of miracles right now. Who are all these people following me, please? Hold on. The Lord wants to release fruitfulness. Please be sensitive, everybody, inside and outside. He's using children as a point of contact, but this will affect every other area's life. Every other body's. Um, how many years? Six. Six years. Your sister, yes. where is she? She's in Zara. How about you? 11 years. Oh my God. My auntie. 11 years. Ah. Why didn't they come for the miracle service? She's in Abuja. No, 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 no. Please, don't, don't just come out carelessly. Please, please. Okay, come out. The Lord is asking me to let you come out. Please. I'm going to pray for the sick, but barrenness issue. Let's deal with it right now. Tonight, I want God to step into people's lives. I think you should honor what Jesus is doing in this place. Look at the number of issues. Believe me, when I tell you there will be testimonies. If you are standing here for yourself, just move this way. If you're standing for yourself, move this way, please, so that I know. Please, just move here. I will worship him forever, love him forever, because this is God is to Please, this way, just let there be a separation. My, my brothers and sisters, please see how many people the devil is tying down. The Lord is bringing you into an anointing. It's a healing anointing that is coming on you. I see an angel of the Lord pouring like oil upon your head. You, you looking at me. 
something is being activated in your spirit man step into that oil that fountain is that healing anointing koinonia please i want you to know that this is a platform that god has created to wipe the tears of men as we gather there every week god is doing something please be patient with god tonight and let him do something in your life because i have to pray for the sick i'm only going to lay hands on those who are standing here for themselves because i want them to return with the testimony but for all of us who are connecting for other people you lift your hands you out right now right now it's a curse upon the family you are going by the spirit of the living god right now you are a devil of darkness i see you in the spirit and there must be that release right now please those of us here talk to the lord on behalf of your loved ones and say lord you must change your story you must change your story. Those of us here, I'm going to lay hands on you by you. Please pray. Thank you, Jesus. All right, lift your hands, everyone. Here. This category, just lift your hands, please. For time's sake, I may not be able to lay hands on you, but I want you to believe. Something is happening to you that is happening to your loved ones. You need to call them and believe. Many of you are receiving for your loved ones. My goodness, I hear the cry of children. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a miracle right now right now right now right now right now receive it for your loved ones receive it right now i open wombs i open wombs i open wombs in the name of jesus i open wombs i command a remembrance a remembrance right now in the name of jesus right here we declare miracle children for your loved ones miracle children they take in right now and nine months after now they give birth to their children in the name of jesus hallelujah please go back to your seat god bless you god bless you those who are standing here i'm going to pray for you please make sure you are married if you are not married please don't embarrass yourself go back to your seat praise the lord let me pray for those who are standing for themselves we have to pray that's why you came hallelujah Remember the testimony that God gave a woman who had been barren for eight years. How many years? Eight solid years. And God gave her triplets. They are still alive till today. Triplets. Triplets. Please, I want you to believe God. If you are standing husband and wife, no problem. You are standing for your wife, no problem. Just make sure you are married. That's the only thing we are saying. Please. I'm going to pray for you. Stretch your hands over them and pray because we will release fruitfulness right now. In the name of Jesus. I don't care what the problem is. Jesus is stepping in. My confidence. The source of my strength. Are you. The strength of my life. Are you. My hope and my joy. Are you. Hey, my confidence. Are you. Looked around and I suddenly realized that you've been so good to me. Your, Your mercy is everlasting, undenying, overwhelming. I tell you, celebrate God because this will end. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call when I call you? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call? The source of my strength are you. The strength of my life are you. My and my joy are you. Hey, my confidence are you. The source of my strength are you. The strength of my life are you my up and my joy my confidence hey, I exalt you oh
Jesus, I release this miracle. Madam, go and return back with your child. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let this womb be open. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Madam, you are coming back with a testimony. What is there has been removed. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord wipes your tears. Right now in the name of Jesus. Where is your husband? Sir, please stand near your wife. There's a reason why the Lord is asking. Can you hold her hands? Hold on. I don't care what the doctors say. You are returning with your testimony. The Lord is giving you a baby girl and then a baby boy. I know you want a boy, but God is giving you a baby girl first and then a boy in the name of Jesus. Make sure you come and testify. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, a miracle, a miracle. But there are still three more cases we'll deal with very fast. We'll pray for this just for one minute and then I'll begin to prophesy. There are people who have not yet received what they came for here. Please, just be patient with us. Please, this is a miracle service, right? So that we can justify our coming. Please, let's rise. We'll just do this in one minute. I'd like you to believe. Stretch your hands here right now. Stretch your hands in one minute and let's pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards the prayer request and let's pray. Prophesy over it. Your request is here. Lord, we turn it into a testimony. Please make sure those outside their requests are here too. If they are here to collect your request, just wave it inside and outside and somebody will come and attend to you. Are you praying? Prophesy. Father, this must become a testimony in my life. This must become a testimony in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you answer prayers in this place. Shebakarota supra di let there be miracles, oh God. Let there be breakthroughs, oh God. Supernatural miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Miracles upon miracles. Miracles. Visit everyone. Visit issues of concern in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I prophesy over this request in the name that is above all names. That every request represented here, no matter how impossible it is, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let every dead situation here come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, my God, we sang that you are not a man. Turn every captivity here. Turn every captivity here. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want to prophesy to us. Please lift your hands. Um, you don't have to bring them out. It will be... Just give me 10 more minutes, but it's going to be extensive prophecy. Extensive prophecy. I want to speak to you because... I know the things that, I see things in the spirit that have not yet been received. We have to pray in the name of Jesus. Please, I want you to believe God and lift your hands. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. The Lord is starting off with direction. There are people here who came praying, Lord, what is the next step of my destiny? Wherever you are, I'm prophesying to you. As I speak, fire will come upon you. Just on your head. Some of you will start feeling fiery sensations on your ears. The Lord is bringing direction right now. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
receive it right now receive it right now right now right now supernatural direction shake a parotopa help that guy in the name of jesus every confusion in your life those outside make sure you participate someone is asking oh god what is the next step i pray by this anointing receive direction right now receive direction right now in the name of jesus someone's marital destiny is under siege right now in the name that is above all names an anointing a yoke breaker anointing i prophesy receive it right now i open those doors right now inside outside i open those doors right now hallelujah there's someone praying you are asking god for money for rent rent the lord is telling me that between now and monday morning there is a miracle coming for you there is a miracle coming for you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there are ladies who have even guys this spell of disfavor please listen in the name of jesus you will literally feel like something being wiped out of your face i see many people being affected by this lord where are they that mark of disfavor by this anointing right now right now i break that mark right now inside outside in the name of jesus i tell of that mark that mark of disfavor that embargo of bad luck upon your life that makes things not to work i come against it in the name of jesus hallelujah listen you have come to the end of your road and if god does not step in there will not be any way out i pray for you that door closed over your destiny that will not allow you move to the next level i stand under this anointing in this miracle service and i prophesy i command that door to open right now oh come on believe it believe it i command that door to open shakatata i command that door to open swing open in the name of jesus whatever has been emerged from heaven to enter your hand and is yet to enter your hand please stretch your hands towards me Shalakataya. in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands back receive it right now receive it receive it receive it right now everything that must enter your hand inside and outside i command it from the realm of the spirit i deliver it to your hands in the name of jesus hallelujah everything that has refused to grow in your hand ideas businesses please listen everything that has refused to grow in the name that is above all names return and cause it to grow return and cause it to grow i command that business grow I command your family grow. I command your finances grow. I command your ministry grow. Hallelujah. I pray for you. You hear me pray this all the time because I've seen what it can do in the life of a man. Where are your destiny helpers? If there is one prayer you must receive in this place listen god can use men to help a man and in one day god can bring the right people to wipe your tears lift your hands in the name of jesus the son of the living god where you have struggled and struggled 
with no hope of help as you lift your hands let an anointing from heaven land upon your life and call helpers right now right now right now i release that anointing upon you for help for help for help for help take it receive it the anointing listen all you need in your life one person can just tell you do a b c or i know a who can do b for you and it can open you up to a whole new world one more time i pray i call them from the north the south if they are in zaria here we call them if they are in kaduna state we call them any part of nigeria receive their ministry now receive their ministry now whoever has vowed to destroy your life i'm praying oh this is judgment in the name that is above all names if there is any human entity standing i declare let this night be a night of judgment let this night be a night of judgment let this night be a night of judgment listen when pharaoh refused to allow egypt israel go god took his firstborn whatever must be taken from your enemy to let you go we take it tonight in the name of jesus hear me let me tell you the truth there are men that hold the destinies of people low i teach you principles of success but i'm spiritual enough to know a man's destiny can be kept at a standstill whoever kept your destiny at a standstill in the name that is above all names i put an anointing upon you go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward in the name of jesus go forward i prophesy in your career go forward in every area of your life hallelujah let me speak over our finances you see what is happening around the nation father we believe in the power to prosper and we believe in favor ah there is such a thing my brother and my sister called favor lift your hands my god and my king that anointing for favor that was on joseph that anointing that made five loaf and two fish to feed five thousand people wherever you are may that anointing come on your life right now it's coming on people may that anointing come upon you it comes upon you right now hallelujah some of us are moving but our pace is too slow that's the truth we need acceleration we are moving but your pace is too slow there are things you should do in two weeks not three years there are things you should do in one day i'm praying for you the bible says and the hand of god came upon elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of ahab down to jizreel the anointing that must come upon you that between now and next month miracle service what has not happened from when koinonia started may the god that i serve release it into your life i command speed 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 i prophesy it speed hallelujah all those writing jam lift your hands it's time for you to move forward if you are not writing you can stand in for somebody maybe your loved ones or whatever in the name of jesus the bible says and when they were tested in all matters of wisdom hear me daniel was found 10 times better that 10 times better unction as you write your jam 
may the angel of wisdom cause you to pass this jam in the name of Jesus there are people who suffer and read and sit there in front of that computer and don't know what to do you will know what to do in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I'm led to pray for those in final year I don't know why but the Holy Spirit is speaking to me we need to release you there are things that have come up some of us physically speaking is obvious there is trouble where is that God who can correct a man's mistake I pray for you in the name that is above all names you will graduate this year I said you will graduate this year I don't know how it will happen but you must graduate this year hallelujah the secret receive this two more and we're done the secret the ideas the strategy you need for the next level of your life I'm praying for you please lift your hands there will be a strong impartation God is releasing anointings for creativity some of it will come upon you you will not know why but when you sleep you will see it in dreams my God I'm praying I see this thing falling on at least 40 people in the name that is above all names that anointing for creativity receive it right now right now right now right now an impartation an impartation an impartation an impartation inside outside inside outside take it take it take it creativity ideas I send them from the spirit concept right now right now business ideas career ideas hallelujah now I'm going to pray the last prayer breakthrough you don't know what breakthrough is some of you let me tell you what breakthrough is breakthrough is when the barrier standing between you and the next level is not lifted destroyed if it's lifted it can appear in your future please listen some of us what you need is breakthrough you don't even know the name of the situation you are in but I pray at the count of three I want everybody to just shout breakthrough as loud as you can and something remarkable will happen I'm seeing rain falling that's what I'm saying father this is the instruction you gave me as we shout hey, yeah, 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 yeah. somebody's husband husband somebody's husband is receiving breakthrough somebody's husband husband at the count of three one two three yes lord receive it receive it receive it malakata bababa breakthrough breakthrough i smash those barriers breakthrough in the name of jesus breakthrough i mark you with an anointing that anywhere they see you they will be compelled to bless you listen to what i'm saying i mark you with an unction i mark you with a mystery and i command that anywhere they see you may they bless you anywhere you enter may this anointing force men to bless you anywhere you travel to may this anointing distinguish you isaac blessed his son and said the smell of my son is like the field brothers and sisters hear me there is a fragrance that can come upon a man that will force men to bless you anyhow 
I don't know who must appear to bless you, but I'm saying it again. In the name of Jesus, I mark you with a mystery that forces men to bless you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for lifting. 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 My hand. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.